to get offered that position about two days after I talked to you. I figured. Oh, here's another for you. Pretty busy, you know. Well, she does work over there. Okay. She does my. You know, painter. Yeah, she does all the payroll. <laughs> Financial aspects of the school, but she was teaching me. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's balanced counseling. And then they uh, offered she was making about 25 there, and they offered it. I'll take grandkids over to Charleston. And they go with her. Yeah. 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 Is it right here? When are you ready? Are you ready? It's not as hot as last time. Will, would you check that? Good evening. I'd like to call to order this uh, City Council meeting. It's Monday, October the 5th, 2015 at 7.02 p.m. Mr. Charles Derry, would you mind calling the please? Thank you, sir. A.C. Brown is absent. Lee Johnson is absent. Rod Powell? Here. Dan McDaniel? Here. Tim Terry? Here. Lance Terry? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. If you would please stand and we would have our prayer by Richard McKinney, and followed by our Pledge of Allegiance by Chief Will Dawson. Join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day and for this beautiful time of the year that we have in this part of the country. Thank you, Lord, for this nation that you've allowed us to live in, for this state, and especially this town that is represented by this elected body here. We pray that as we enter into this meeting tonight that the members of this body seek your godly wisdom as they make decisions and that they will in the interest of the people are always represented in Christ and we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I would like to ask the council's approval of the minutes for the September the 8th council meeting, along with the September 17th special called council meeting, and along with the special called. Uh, we have time to correct the court of correction, I think, on the uh, minutes of July 1st. I received a call that it was a.m. there instead of p.m. on those, so I apologize for that, but I corrected it to p.m. to so approve it. You know what? I had a I had a problem with one of them. You said on one of the had AC listed as there and not there. I think. Was it on the special call? I think so. I can't remember which one it was. I can't believe they remember it. I always read these in it. Oh, uh, yeah, I see it. I will go back and revisit the recording and see which one it really is because it has them both uh, present and then listed as absent on the special call of September 17th. Yeah. I have to say, I think we all know that's typical of AC, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He comes in after roll call a lot of times. Right. No, I meant to be here and then not to be here. <laughs> Sorry. I'm picking on him because he's not here. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we approve the minutes with the stated correction. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Tim Terry? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Thank you. Next on the agenda is approval of the mileage report. I have none for this month. Uh, we'll move right into the recognitions and acknowledgments. Tonight I've asked uh, a special guest here tonight. I think I saw him come in. Oh, there he is. I didn't recognize him without your hat. Oh, heavens, I know him too. This is, is a time that I, in the last couple of months, have been recognizing businesses in town that have taken uh, an older building uh, that maybe was not, maybe in disrepair or just didn't fit in anymore, and, and business owners have taken that building and turned it into something very appealing and and uh, nice for the city of Greenwood and this uh, this particular gentleman did this quite a few years ago and I've got to tell you tonight I find it interesting that our, our uh, uh, 
planning director asked Mr. Sean Lynn why he came to Greenwood uh, not too long ago in a, it, it was a meeting that we were having, maybe economic development, and he said there was no Chinese food here. And he didn't follow it up at Dub, but I think that's what he was trying to say. <laughs> he, this kind of felt like that, didn't it? But uh, Sean Lynn has taken Lynn's house, uh, which was the old Sonic, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. and made it something very nice and appealing and obviously has some good food and he does an amazing job with the landscaping and I know that he does it himself uh, because I went there to eat last week or so and uh, I'm not sure I was ready to eat because he normally jumps in and out and cooks but he had been uh, working out in the landscape in the front a lot and he does a fantastic job so if Sean would come up to the front change the recipes and everything for you if you just let it because Chief uh, Brian goes in and gets no onion, whatever he wants. He gets, I'm not sure what how that works either. But anyway, no vegetable, that's right. Uh, I don't have anything to hand to these people and I'm not sure who all are here tonight, but also uh, we celebrated the 13th, we the city celebrated our 13th annual Bell Park Festival in Bell Park, which is an appropriate place I think to have that. Uh, this last Saturday had a tremendous amount of people come from, I don't know where, from all over. Uh, it's hard. Some people ask how many people we have at those events. It's extremely hard to tell. Uh, I know our uh, uh, favorite uh, gentleman, friend of mine, pastor, he always said, ministerially speaking, that he would add 300 to it or something. But anyway, uh, there, was, there were thousands, to say the least, up at Bell Park this Saturday. It was a great event. The weather was perfect. Uh, everything in the world you can imagine to do and, and uh, to eat and all that sort of thing. So there are some people that I need to, to acknowledge, and again, they may or may not be here, uh, but certainly Dan and Donna Gladwin were there and helped out as they always do with everything in Greenwood. Uh, Tammy Briley, who works for the chief over the police department, and Brooke, of course, Brooke Holland, they got together. And when you get to those two ladies together, you're gonna, you're gonna walk the line and get it done right, so they did a good job. Believe it or not, Stuart Bryan pitched in a little bit this, this year. Your name is on my list. I don't know why. Uh, of course, Richard McKinney, who never wants any thanks. In fact, he probably has left the room at this. No, there he is. Uh, and Richard's granddaughter, correct? Uh, Devin Cribs was there all day helping out with everything she could. And, and, and a multitude of other people, Parks Commission, I know everybody helped out a lot. But uh, thank you guys. And if you would give those a round of applause, I appreciate it. Fire department as always, police department, uh, we're all there uh, with all of our, most of our, all of our city clubs, storm society, fog, those folks, uh, just everybody pitched in, it was a great day, so. And I got dizzy doing uh, hay rides and never stopped, and people, that, that was cool, we had, we had a great time. 
Uh, committee reports. We'll get right into it. Mr. Kenny Sunday with Boys and Girls Club. you do for the kids. It's a tough job. But you do have staff. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I understand. Uh, we appreciate what you do. Uh, SRCA, I think Lisa Moore is not here tonight. I think she dropped off a report for you guys. Hopefully you have that in your packet. And she uh, had, couldn't remember exactly what the reason was, but she couldn't be here tonight. So if you have any questions, just let let me know and I'll address and give those to her. Parks Commission, Joel Goldstein. Mr. Mayor, City Council, Andy, Derek. Parks Commission. 
commission met Tuesday, September 15th here at City Hall. Some of the items on the agenda was the Park Commission approved term limits for chairman and vice chairman. Uh, there'll be three consecutive, three, one year and three. We'll serve three consecutive terms, one year term each. The uh, park equipment at Fairhaven Cove is not acceptable to the HOA Cove. There'll be some more discussions on that. The commission review donated land to the city of Greenwood, green space versus parks. We're going to get that determination of what if it was a donation, was a park or green space. So uh, that kind of comes into some of the areas that we're looking at uh, for the dog park or for like the cove. Today we, appointed, today we appointed a Freedom Fest committee. Uh, we'll start meeting on a monthly basis for next year's Freedom Fest. We have some estimates for uh, continuation of the trails in the City Lake. The South Loop extension was 15,700, and the East Loop extension was 54,800. I'm not sure of the total distance. You say 54,000? Is that East Loop? Mm -hmm. That's the one that goes past the Iron Bridge and makes the loop. Okay. And then we'll continue that around. Uh, we're holding off until 2016. We do have $20,000 in the budget for 2015, and we want to put 20000 in the budget for 2016. But we're waiting on the uh, possibility of that 80 20 grant. In which case, if we get it, we have to come up with twenty thousand dollars for the eighty thousand. So it's kind of holding off right now on that. The uh, commission postponed talks on the bill off until two thousand seventeen. The uh, survey from Satterfield is done for the Main Street Trail extension is complete. Uh, Mike Andy will be working on getting the easements written up and signed. And last but not least, a great, great fall festival. And a great job by all. Any question? Is the, sorry, is the uh, grant, the 8020, is that due November? Or the you get the results back? Does that sound right, Richard? Or? I think so. Okay. 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 Thank you. Appreciate it. Gary Grimes Consulting. Who's very well protected this evening, it looks like. <laughs> Fair Council, Mr. Harry, Mike Hamby. Uh, I want to bring late tonight, and, and I wanted to talk a little bit about a, uh, the new polling place that we have in, in, uh, in the Greenwood area now. And I'm, I'll let he talk about why and, and, and the reasons for and, and we think, and I think, I really believe that it'll be a, a great area for this. It's, it's a centralized, it's here, uh, what everyone can, uh, the plenty parking here as far as I'm concerned, for, for the voters. So I think it'll work out, but I'll let him talk about it. Well, basically, I'll let you all know how this came about. You all probably read the paper. We're completely modernizing our collection equipment, all new equipment, uh, about a million three is what we're putting into that. Uh, we're moving toward off-site early voting. This will be our first out of courthouse early voting site with more to come. Uh, and we pick, we kind of picked Greenwood as as the test site for this for the whole county because Greenwood was kind of set by itself with no surrounding cities, no air, no polling places that intertwine from outside the city. Uh, early voting turnout was high here, so we thought that was a good good choice. Uh, and we, we were torn between several places to host it in Greenwood. Greenwood, most of y'all don't realize there was, there was four polling sites in Greenwood. And they're all, if you just draw a line, they're probably all within two miles of each other. So it made sense to kind of, we can do it the same manpower at one polling site <coughs> and do 
four times the people. So it's kind of a cost saving measure, uh, but it's also more toward moving toward the future toward consolidated polling locations. So Gray was just a perfect fit for that. And I don't know, there, there may be some negatives, you know, or off that people, people will say, well, I, I went to the wrong place. We think that once you get this past you, from now on, they'll say, oh, everybody agree with goes to the same place. It doesn't matter where your polling site is. Most people don't realize the confusion people go to the wrong polling sites. They just see a voting sign out and they think they can go. And they can in the future. That's what we're going toward, is everything in the future you'll be able to go any, any polling site in the county in vote once we get everything lined out. But this is the first step. It worked out well for us. Greenwood chose to have a November election. It gives us a good test run for the offsite early voting. Then our new equipment will roll out in March election, which is coming pretty quick. And we'll do everything we can to notify the people that it's been moved here uh, instead of the courthouse. The courthouse, if y'all ever <coughs> saw at the courthouse, sometimes they get pretty long outside the door. Bad weather, we've looked at weather issues because the you had noticed they moved the primaries back to March. There could be some bad weather. Out there. People having to stand outside the courthouse would be good. So there was multiple reasons we did this, but uh, we think it's going to be for the best. But question? Everybody have the same poll inside. Thank you. And, and thanks, Council, for uh, uh, if there are any questions. If we have any problems, we'll then. then let, uh, let you know, let, let me know, let him know, and uh, uh, we'll try to go for it. Yeah, if there is a problem, if we see a traffic info problem or too long a line, not enough parking, we'll adjust maybe where it's at, but I don't foresee it ever going away from one polling site and all side of the truck. We may adjust the site, but we don't foresee it. That's a big expense. That's why we don't want to move it very many times, because we have to send all these legal notices out to every registered voter that their polling site's changed. So we don't want to move anymore, we have to, but we understand that it's kind of a work in progress. If it doesn't work out here, we'll find somewhere to go. But as you know, everything's got to be handicapped accessible, play of parking. It's getting hard to find people to work at those, so we're trying to consolidate. Okay. We've had a couple of visits, I think twice, and now I think the, the folks from the commission or the election office have come by and looked to see what, how it's going to be set up. So, so far so good, let's see. Is this early voting and election day voting also? Everything. Okay. Everything will be here. Which, uh, yeah. that's, that's what I'll say. It'll be a week for your early voting will be a week, and I think we've decided on having it in the mm -hmm. early yes. voting. Then the actual election day, I think we're going to hold this room. Be complete different set of machines. We'll bring two sets of machines. They're also really the only election we've got that day, so we'll have extra people here monitoring. I'll try to be down here all day. We'll try to eliminate any problems there are. Hopefully this works well. We'll we'll see. And then, you know, if it works well, you'll sit in other places in the county. So, uh, for the last 20 years, everywhere I go out through the, through the county, it's sheriff this, sheriff that. But guess what? The, the real sheriff's here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I, I didn't expect to get that, but Bill, uh, thank you, thank you, sheriff, for being here. Uh, we what? Thank you. One of the things that he and I he and I talked the other day about the. Uh, economic development and I kind of asked that he become part of not maybe not if he did, can't because he serves on lots of committees I know but he can be a lot of help to us on the economic development throughout the county sure. and, and Greenwood being a big part of this county when he said Sheriff sure, Quick thank, uh, <coughs> thank you uh, you know there's not a month that doesn't go by that somebody from up around Fort Smith or in Sebastian County who's thinking about putting the business in comes by to, to see me that talk about you know the the quality of life and and the uh, the type of crime rate that we have here in Sebastian County and, and one thing that I think that y'all can be commended on is is every single business person who thinks about putting business enforcement for Sebastian County the first thing um, that they talk about is Greenwood and, and I think you all should be proud about that and I also think you know the the police department that y'all have uh, just built is just Totally amazing. It sets them on a hill where everybody can see it. And I can guarantee you, you know, talking about economic development, when when people think about Greenwood and they come and, and they think about a low crime rate or a nice quality of life, I mean, your investment in that police department, I think, is going to pay dividends in the future. 
It is, without a doubt, probably one of the nicest police departments uh, in the state of Arkansas that I have ever been to. So I think the chief can be proud, y'all can be proud of what you've done. And, and probably with the chief's permission and, and y'all's permission, I'd love to get our quorum court to kind of take a tour of you and let them know what we might need with the sheriff's department. So anyway, this is a job well done. I've got to say that. Any questions, Sheriff? Tomorrow night, Sheriff, this is the national night out, and you can think, send all the quorum court guys over there. there you you go. Go. Hey, there you go. And maybe we can kind of uh, yeah. get, yeah. get before then. But I know we have, uh, I like three or four meetings every year, you know, down here at the courthouse. So we, we'd love to kind of get the tour down there if they don't show up for the national night out. But we'll have some staff members down there ourselves help now. So appreciate y'all. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sheriff Allenbeck. Appreciate you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. And I think the safety that we enjoy, obviously, is due in part to former Sheriff Gary Grimes and current Sheriff Hollenbeck and, of course, our own police department. So we thank those guys for working hard and keeping us safe. Okay, MAHG architect firm. I don't see Mr. Lejong here this evening. He said last time he didn't think he had any Okay, okay. All right. Uh, we'll move into the Water Wastewater Commission, Mr. Rattery. <coughs> Mayor, Council, Mr. Andy, Mr. Uh, Water Wastewater Commission met September 28th. Uh, pretty light agenda. One item that we uh, specifically talked about was the budgets. We started our budget process, set the expectation we'd like to have those budgets preliminary turned in at the next uh, commission meeting at the end of this month. And hopefully, we'll be able to step through that pretty quickly and get those back um, for the council to review. Um, we also had a lengthy discussion about the Arkansas Natural Resource uh, loan. Um, we had two separate tanks that we'd like to look in and evaluate it to try to put in. And our engineering firm has, has submitted all the documentation to Arkansas Natural Resource. It actually goes to the State Health Department first and they review it. And they rejected uh, the second tank of Bellwood for the second time because of wording. Uh, the way that it's worded, there, there's a lot of restrictions on those funds that are available to us. And uh, so we've had to tweak it again for the third time and resubmit it, but it looks like, it looks like we're going we're gonna to be able to pass that hurdle this time. And once we pass that hurdle, we'll get a, get a handshake from those guys, and we'll come back to the council, lay it all out, how much it's going to cost, give it to Mr. Hamby, uh, and start down that path of the bond that we'll issue, and hopefully spring of next year start construction. We're still in the kind of the preliminary stages uh, of, of doing that. We've got the engineering uh, groundwork kind of set. They've done the surveys. They've done the, um, the geos up there, which we had money set aside in this year's budget for. And then um, if we get the approval from Arkansas Natural Resource, that'd be one and a half percent, roughly two and a half million dollars over a 10 year term. And then we'll get Mr. Handy in. Uh, bond attorney would probably be dead in the end, so I'm assuming it's who he would recommend, but we'll, we'll um, get that ball rolling hopefully toward the end of the year, right at, right at the end of the year, 1st of uh, 2016. Uh, business as usual with, with everything that's going on, they're just working on maintenance. Most of the projects that we had going on that are complete, but they're just doing day to day stuff, maintenance and um, project, small projects that they've kind of held off on. I talked to you last month, which you should have in your packet. Um, we talked about the sewer line that's going to potentially provide service from Liberty Drive to Highway 71 on 10 Spur there for the businesses, that commercial corridor, very critical for the city of Greenwood. We've got our water there. And if you look at the map that we provided, and again, these, these are rough drafts. Uh, we did approve. Greg to move forward on the engineering of that. The engineering is going to cost us about forty-five hundred dollars. Once we get the engineering back, you know we'll fine-tune this. But you can see a rough draft. That yellow line. Um, when you're looking at this piece of paper, you see Walmart there. You can see Highway 71, and at the bottom of it, you see Tinsburg. That the yellow line is the actual sewer line that we're anticipating putting in. Right now, this, this is just a preliminary drawing. I think I'd like to see it straighten out a little bit, maybe do a little bit different uh, as far as staying closer to Walmart, but that's going to 
that's going to be determined by the topographical structure that's there because we want that to, to do gravity flow. We don't want to have to put a pump station in there. So that will determine that. That does give you a rough draft how we would service all of those, those um, lots through there. And then I also included um, just a copy of the estimate. And again, this was a rough estimate that was put together by Brixie. Kind of identifies exactly how much that's going to cost. Somewhere, you know, between seventy-five and eighty-five, maybe a hundred thousand dollars at the most, depending on on what that final engineering report looks like. We talked a little bit last month about uh, City of Greenwood call sharing with us on that, and and I'm not here with an ordinance, but I still would like to discuss that and see if, there, if there's some way that that we could get some participation in it, just like we would get these landowners to participate in the cost of maybe implementing this as well. We would look for the council to kind of help cost share some of that, that burden as well, whatever y'all felt was appropriate. There's no way we'd be able to recover our cost in sewer fees or water fees. We do get a 1%, um, so that's going to help. But the biggest uh, recipient of that tax would be the city of Greenwood. So hopefully there would be a little bit available for y'all to, to help cost share that. And what I would do is if, if, if the council approves that you would participate in that, then we'll put together uh, a resolution that, that would allow for that and also identify specifically how, how we would cost share that with the participants of these um, this effort for the, for the landowners and we'll lay that out in specifics in an ordinance because we see this specifically as a commercial corridor for the, for the city of greenwood both on the south side and the north side of Jensburg. steve There's a lot of opportunity there. this is without precedent we've never done this before correct how what are and i i see where you, we are the recipient of what y'all are putting yourselves out and then we end up with the benefit because we gain sales tax off all these commercial facilities. What are you suggesting? I mean, what is your percentage that you're wanting the city of Greenwood to? Well, I think, you know, I think a 25% number would be something that, that would be appealing. 25, did you say? 25%. So if you look at seventy, if you look at hundred thousand dollars, worst case scenario, you know, if, if, uh, if y'all be willing to commit twenty five thousand on that, if it's seventy five, maybe something less than that, be closer you're, to seventeen or eighteen. And you're figuring there may be six commercial interests there, maybe seven or eight. It's probably going to be closer to six. We've got the two that are along Highway seventy one. That sewer line is already there. Okay. Real tough. <coughs> charge them for a line that's already in the ground. Uh, but if you look east, you know, there's no sewer there at all. So that though, we'd focus on those those lots that don't have access to sewer. What about these property owners participating in the expense? That that's what we would do if come back and, and do an ordinance or a resolution. I'm not sure exactly which one of those we'd have to uh, to focus on, but we'd we put that in the ordinance so that there would be participation. In other words, if, if you know if you're going to develop this property, then you want to tap into the sewer. Uh, then here's what it's going to cost you to do to do that. Have any indicated that they would tie on? I mean, I guess you got maybe a house or two right there right now. It's yeah, they're on septic. Yeah. Um, but they're not interested in tying on. If you well, I, you know, I just if that turns into a commercial corridor, I don't think you're going to see those homes in here. No. I think those are going to go for sale pretty quickly. As soon as that starts to develop through there, I mean, I anticipate from Liberty West that that's all going to wind up being commercial business through there, and those are pretty good-sized lots. So you can develop that in several different ways. They, may, you know, some of these lot owners may even decide to subdivide it, and, and if they do, then you know, they can share that. Cost. We can split that cost up however we need to do it for that. But um, the commission is 100% behind the cost sharing. Um, how we go about doing that, we'll consult with Mr. Handy, who 
to make sure that we do it appropriately. And um, but that would be the expectation is we get cost cost share. And whether or not it's 100 percent, we discuss that. Now, when we uh, cost share that, if your sewer and water your sewer taps, you start gaining money back from right. what you put yourself out. Do we get some of our money back? As it comes in, yes. you get part of your 25% back? Right. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, if you guys are going to invest money, you need to see a return on your investment as well. Yeah, because we're all investing money expecting a return. Steve, my question is, when, when you when you looking at maybe trying to do this? I mean, that's well, the engineering, can we go through? Okay. So, uh, Rich is waiting for the approval to move forward. Once he moves forward with the engineering, we'll have a, a good idea on the cost. Uh, this was an estimate that he provided us. I think we'll be pretty close to that, and then we, we could we could actually, you know, depending on how this lays out, we could be uh, hammering in the in the ground by the by the first of the year. The reason I'm asking because I know I, I just make sure with Charlotte, but that also pays off this year, 2015. It's that's that's 100 grand a year. You know what I'm saying? So for 2016's budget, I mean, we're finally. You know what I'm saying? If we were looking for maybe some money to, you know, to, to do that with, and, and, that, and, and as far as I mean, that's money well spent. So that's just something to keep in mind. Because well, I'm all for it. I mean, the more businesses locate out there, the more we benefit from the sales tax. So. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking that pre-water commission, when we had a water committee, if we would have walked up here and said we want to build the sewer line because we think it's needed for this commercial corridor it would have been a discussion of where do we transfer money from to make sure that it's funded you know and i, I don't see it being because you have a commission and a council at this point I and mean, you know at the end of the day it's the city developing that for its commercial needs so it's probably the right thing to do we, we gain a lot of benefit for that 25% because there again, whatever happens out there, we're going to get the You can the see that we get back in the sales tax. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're, you're going to have potential on both you know, the north and the south side of Kinsburg. So I, I think, you know, as you come into Greenwood, you're going to come right through the commercial district of Greenwood coming down Kinsburg in, in the very near future. I mean, it's already started. We've got Walmart, we've got tractor supply. Steve, do you know, can I, you weren't on the commission at the time. When when Walmart was built and they were laying the line out there, there was a we participated in, in making the line bigger to do what we thought was in our best interest. But that may have been a water line. Was that a water line, Greg? Uh, all they need is eight inch. I think we're participating to make the 12. And that was? Part of it was us getting all the easements and participating. But that was water? Uh, sure. Sir? But where did that go? That's where? what this would tie into. That's it. that's the line we're tying yeah. into. If you, look, if you look at the corner there where that ends at Walmart, that's yeah. where that line is. Next to 71. Right. I was thinking we were north of Walmart. No, it, it does come across. Yeah, which, which is why I said the north part of Tinsburg is, is another opportunity right there where Burton's taking the hill down. <coughs> that line ends right there. There's a. There's a um, That's the line we put in the then, right? City put it in from, from the, the front of the gas station all the way across. All the way to the 71. And we're actually using it now a different way. There's a manhole sitting on the north side of Tinsburg. I think that's critical yeah. for that north side there now water is going to be something we'll have to think about if he develops that out because james fork provides him the water and they don't have the capacity we'd have to either supplement or work with james fork on increasing that but we we, we set that expectation that's why we put a 12 inch all the way to the end of tractor supply is just to be able to push that across here so any questions Again, what I'm going to do is we're going to, we're going to get the engineering done. We're going to come back with the final numbers. Let's take a look at it. And at that time, I'll have something that, that you know, 
identify the rules and regulations associated with in the form of an ordinance. Budget resolution. Budget resolution. There we go. Any <laughs> questions? Steve, I don't have a question, but I want to commend, as I did the, at, at the uh, Water Wastewater Com Commission meeting, uh, even the commissioners taking this action or trying to take this action to move forward. You know, we talk about it. I know my little speech, I won't give you the whole speech tonight, but I've done it before and probably did it a few times before it's all said and done. But uh, there's so many communities out there that our Economic Development Committee is going to visit with, and we hear what they're doing, and they're, they're doing a lot of things and, and mainly it's infrastructure and you know they'll go as far as building a building sometime not just water and sewer but just to just to be thinking ahead like that is is good and i'm, I'm so thankful that the commission's doing that and, and the council's ready to move on it too so this is going to be huge for greenwood in the in the very near future i'll say to that though at the time walmart was being built we we all sat here and thought this is going to be a boom yep. town when Walmart goes in. We're going to develop all that overnight, and it's just never developed. And and I don't know all the reasons for that, but you know, I, I don't know where where the hang up is there. I mean, I don't feel like it's some anything the city's doing, but whatever we can do to push development in that area, and tractor supply going in should help. I would think. I think sewer and water is going to be the key. I think it'll help. I think, I think sewer well, we've been looking for that for that development for a long time and it just well I think and, really and, and I know the mayor's probably not ready to work Senate's not ready to talk about it but you know there's a lot of there's a lot of interest let me put it to that there's a lot of interest through there and, and I'm not even aware of, of a lot of but I know that they, they talk about the interest and and so you know I think you're ready we're getting ready to see some some major things start to pop through there I know Mr. Burton is, is anxious to uh, uh, petition for annexation of, the, of, the, of his property, uh, but he's kind of tied up right now with moving earth. <laughs> so he's he's preoccupied, but as soon as that kind of slows down, he's, he's going to jump back on that, and um, you know that water is waiting, waiting there for, for that development as well. And the sewer's already there. Else? Thank you, Steve. Appreciate you. Okay, we are to the Citizen Forum part of the agenda. I have uh, no one has signed up this evening, but in case, I always like to give everybody a chance in case you weren't aware of the forum at the back of the room or if you just forgot about it, if, if there's a citizen here that would like to uh, <laughs> take five minutes, we'll certainly allow you to do that at this time. Wow, that was per perfect timing. That yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Reynolds, if you'll step forward and state your name. I know who you are, but. Well, I didn't realize I was going to be, but. That's uh, interesting. <laughs> Jim Reynolds, I'm here to uh, just make you aware of something that I've, I've discussed it with the mayor. Uh, October the 16th, after the Bulldog beat Benton, I believe it is. Uh, we're looking at having a outdoor concert and the students from the edge band they told me their name is the edge band that's real you know they went out on a limb to make it that but anyway the edge band is going to be performing uh, for about an hour after the game so we're looking at somewhere between 10 and 12 uh, before you uh, do the reading tonight on the uh, food trucks we would like to an opportunity to be able to park a food truck right there beside our business, right beside the outdoor stage, so that when students come down, they can have an opportunity to eat or drink after the ball game as well. Uh, we've requested that uh, we have a police officer down there present as well, because we've even talked about uh, blocking off the street uh, just from the full or not full way stop, the stop sign to the end of the uh, telephone building right there and that way if anybody comes down Atlanta from the church they can come down there and turn around in the, in the parking lot area to go around you know there's ways to get around so it's just a small real section and that way it gives the kids uh, you know an opportunity to be it's kind of like a block party 
and uh, we're, we're trying to do some different things downtown to kind of get things excited. Uh, in the future, we've got uh, the, is it Dulcimers? I, I believe they're going to try to play the Dulcimers during Christmas, the Christmas open house. And we're doing that just, I'm not doing it to make money or anything like that. I'm not going to charge the food truck to hook up electricity or anything of that nature. We're just trying to get people to come downtown. So I just want to make everybody aware and, uh, as you're making those decisions on the food truck, I, I wanted you to keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will move into the uh, agenda additions, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Come right up. I was here last month to talk about potential fiber to the premise uh, extension, and I, I exchanged some uh, voicemails with Mr. Hanby. Apparently, we've not been able to connect. I apologize for that. I was hopeful that we might be able to get something on the agenda for this month. I, I guess I missed this step. Actually, actually I'm, I thought I'd left my information on that when Charlotte asked me because she saw you sitting out here. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I, I had it buried in here. But there's no need for you to do anything. You're covered under the existing ordinance at this point. And I think you sent me an email pointing out it was 4.25, not 5%. So whatever it might be. It, it's 4.25 percent. And uh, there's uh, this when we adopted this ordinance, it covered existing franchises as well as any uh, communication, internet franchises that may come in in the future. So you're covered. So do I need to do anything? You don't need to do anything? it. Don't need to do anything or sign anything. You're just subject to this particular report already. We're looking forward to it. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Check out. Hmm? Did you start making that check? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Did I see somebody else with their hand up or waving or nope? Okay. We will go to uh, agenda editions. Finance. You have a name. I'm sorry, Miss Abramsdorfer. <laughs> Mm. Four things to add, if I may, please. Um, the first is a resolution. The insurance on the building and property at City Hall came in higher than we had budgeted by $2,106.19. So I'd like to make that item number eight, if I could, please. Okay. And in the street fund, I'd like to make item number nine, a resolution to transfer funds from street lighting to insurance vehicles. They were um, under budget by $825. What was that for? Insurance vehicles in the street department. Uh -huh. Next one, um, the municipal aid offers a um, non-CDL employee drug testing program, and it's for 2016, but the dues are, fees are due this year, and that total is $1,790.40. The mayor would like this added. That is number 10. And then number 11, um, is an ordinance regarding check signers. We need to make an adjustment there as well. That's number 11, correct? Another adjustment. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. McKinney? Yeah, I did. I'd add, if you would, please, an ordinance authorizing the city of Greenwood to conduct business with the quarry. Number 12, the parks. Anyone else? Okay. We will move right into old business then. Uh, police departments. Men, or, uh, ordinance. Actually, I think this was mine, correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> um, this is the third reading, third and final reading. I noticed as uh, Charlotte pointed out that uh, I don't have a, a uh, up-to-date uh, clear copy on this. However, the only changes that I've made to the ordinance that you have 
uh, of what we had discussed in the uh, first reading here in the, in the first paragraph where it says outdoor vendors that will also say who solicit <coughs> sales door to door the same language will be on section one paragraph a after outdoor vendor that same language appears and then under section D there is an additional sentence that says in addition a privileged license fee shall be paid as part of the permit application process so uh, with those additions and I'll have Charlotte the corrected copy in the morning uh, I would request that this be ordinance be placed um, for third and final reading by title only make the motion we place it on for the third reading second we have a motion and a second to place by title only third reading title only Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Lance Terry? Yes. It's unanimous. An ordinance amending ordinances, well, ordinance 09 02 and for other purposes. Okay. Uh, next item number. Next item two. Is, is mine as well. You get tired of hearing from me tonight, I think. Yeah. Uh, the next item is on these mobile, mobile food vendors, and uh, I've been requested to look at uh, what we had initially drafted, try to merge in some of Fort Smith language and some of what Fayetteville has had. And as I tried to do that, I wound up with about a 12 or 13 page uh, document. And I think rather than present that, there's a lot of issues there that I think might be overkill, and, and I really would prefer to um, put what I have before the Planning Commission and let them digest that, crit critique it, and then uh, have somebody bring it back to us uh, in the future. So I would just recommend that we table um, this uh, mobile food vendor ordinance uh, and refer it back to the Planning Commission. Make a motion we table it and refer it back to the Planning Commission. Second. A motion and a second to table and go back to the Planning Commission. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Lance Terry? Yes. Unanimous. Mr. Mayor, before we move on, I've had some folks from the from Vashgrass Country Club get a hold of me mm -hmm. about these food vendors, and they were wanting me to pass the word on. I don't know if any of the people here that own those trucks, but they would like for them to come out and set up shop at the country club if they felt so you know we're, we're kind of i guess trying to get them away from the square or whatever but they would welcome any food vendors to come out there i'm guessing in whatever time whatever day of the week and do their business at the golf course well, on occasion or just whatever I, you know it'd be something they need to go out there and talk with the folks out there but they okay. wanted them to put their name in the hat as a home for some of these people that might want to Okay. They're wanting to move or whatever, and you know, and Jim talked about uh, the the night shift deal. I don't know if those guys wanted to set up after eight o'clock on the square. I know we've got I'm not sure exactly how we've got the wording going here or what the times are, but I mean, whenever all the businesses around the square are closed, I don't see why it would hurt some of those guys to set up shop downtown area. I know. I mean, obviously, we don't want to take away from Mm -hmm. Veterans Park right. and access to it or whatever, but I mean, just nobody, a lot of people eat obviously at night. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, yeah, that's some good information. I think pass that on to Planning Commission One, Richard, uh, Parks Director. You know, we'll get all hopefully get some folks together and, and just maybe hash it out. Part but of I just wanted to, wanted to let whomever know hash that anybody. the golf course was interested in guys okay. going out there and setting up shop. Okay. I think Brooke can probably pass that information on to the vendors themselves, yes. We have contact information with the ones that have been coming or have been coming. Okay. Thank you. Number three, Mr. Hamby. That is, this is the um, prohibiting tie-on to non-dedicated <coughs> sewer lines. This is the uh, to address uh, the avoidance of any uh, future issues that we had with the um, Walters uh, sewer line. Um, is Greg here? Pardon me? I said I can speak to it. <clears throat> has there been any changes so to this? This was something that Greg had requested, and I think Greg hasn't been here uh, 
for any of the discussion, and I was just hoping that he gave this the thumbs up. Or, he did. Okay. It's, it's clear. Then I would re uh, recommend we put it on for the third and final reading by title only. I'll make a motion we put this on for third and final reading by title only. I second it. I have a motion and a second to put on for the third and final reading by title only. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Lance Terry? Yes. It's unanimous. An ordinance regulating towns to private sewer lines within the city limits of the city of Greenwood and for other purposes. I would also would have liked to have seen language. I don't know if I can't, I'm not really seeing it unless it's in all these whereas, hereas, there are, but somewhere where it says they're, you're not allowed to put private lines in the ground unless we get an okay from city hall. I think that's already in existing ordinances that we already have that in on the books. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, number four, Mr. Hamby. Uh, look, this is the um, mayor's uh, brainchild of our state. He uh, pointed out to me the uh, recent legislation that had passed in regards to local vendor preferences. And uh, we have uh, read it for two readings, and uh, I'm in full agreement with it. I think it's well written, well crafted, and recommend that we put it on for third and final reading. I make a motion. We put the ordinance regarding local vendor preference on for third and final reading by title only. I second it. Motion and second for third and final reading, title only. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Ms. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Lance Terry? Yes. Unanimous? Unanimous. An ordinance to amend the purchasing rules and regulations for the city of Greenwood, Arkansas, and to provide for a local vendor preference. Thank you. Okay, uh, new business, number five, Mr. Powell. Oh, I have uh, two separate issues here on item five. Okay. The first issue, we now have uh, recently vacated space over next to us. Now, hopefully it was left in good condition and the police will get their deposit back. <laughs> it's so, still debatable. Yeah, still looking at it? Still looking at it. Uh, has been. <laughs> You know, and, and this, this is a result of us growing. We have this now that we have this fine police department, which is greatly needed and uh, uh, great for our city. But, you know, uh, our, our legal department is what I'm trying to start. <coughs> I'm, wanting to provide, I'm wanting to provide some of this space for a legal department before it all gets uh, taken, because you can hear within the administration, everybody's wanting a little piece. They want to move here, move there. Doug's probably already piling junk in there. So I've, I've, I've visited with the city attorney and we looked at maybe ha having two offices, one for uh, eventual legal assistant and one that he can maintain an office here. Uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, and the reason we're talking about it now because I want to consider it in this next year's budget. Uh, in next year's budget, I would like for you to think about doing this. It may need some reconfiguration of uh, to make some office space, maybe some walls move around, and maybe not. You know, truthfully, I've never really been in there. Uh, Privacy is probably, a, you know, something that you need as a city attorney. But uh, I, I know talking to Mike, you know, we'd need some computers, software, desks, filing cabinets, just general office furniture. I think what I'm asking for, what I would like to ask for in the 2016 budget is about $20,000. In the meantime, Mike and the, and the mayor could probably get together and probably get a list of items needed and maybe get with a, a contractor if needed to maybe re do some reconfiguration and get us a better price for the 2016 budget. I think if you look at how our city's growing, when uh, when you get to about 14, 15,000, you start seeing cities rolling over into full time, having a full time city attorney. You know, I'm, I'm always looking forward. I'm not looking back at Hackett and Huntington and Hartford. You know, we get in this deal with the fire department. We got some guy from Joker from Huntington who's over comparing us to, you know, I, don't, I like looking forward. You know, we, we're probably gonna see 14,000 long before we ever see the city of Hackett. So we need to start progressing ourselves that way. We're growing and we've got, uh, you know, the problems with that growth. You know, Mike, 
eventually is probably going to retire. And I hope he doesn't retire, but he's probably eventually going to retire. He's got like 25 years in. Going on 27. Going on 27 years here at the city of Greenwood. So he's a very seasoned municipal attorney. Uh, I'd like to keep him as long as we can keep him. But, uh, you know, when he does retire, do we really want all of our legal stuff over in his office? or stored out in his shed or out in his garage. I don't know where he's storing all this stuff. We, we need to set up a legal office here in the city, so that's where everybody goes. That's where the city stuff is stored. That's where it's filed at. And, you know, I assume everything's over in his office now, probably mixed up with Hackett's and, you know, Hartford's and all these others that he does, and I'm not sure all of them. Um, do you all agree? Do you think that we need to provide space for a, a legal maintain a legal office here. Well, once you started mentioning documents and that stuff of that nature, that makes sense that it needs to be here on <coughs> campus somewhere. You know, since, since he is an attorney for a bunch of cities. Well, and what's the norm for that? Right? Yeah, not, the, <laughs> not the fire I mean, department. I, I assume you just over the years, you had it and you kept having it and now you got a lot of it. And, I mean, yeah. What what do, what, do, what do most cities do? Um, basically the same thing that I do. Um, you, uh, unless you're a, a larger city, which what Rod has said, has said is is correct. You're in the in the uh, next 20 years, you're going to have to have a full time city attorney. Um, you're uh, right now. You probably need about a half time city attorney. To be honest with you, the municipal league is. Uh, inquired. As a matter of fact, I uh, talked to Mike Mosley today, and uh, he was wanting me to be in two or three different places at the same time. And uh, he was inquiring uh, why we didn't have a, uh, why we hadn't hired an uh, assistant city attorney at this point. Um, so I, I think that is that is definitely coming. Uh, I I would I would when Rod had mentioned this to me. Uh, um, one of the things that uh, I had suggested was the office space, and my thought was that um, uh, maybe using some of that funding that I can put a secretary or paralegal over here that would be here um, anywhere from half time to full time that would be available, uh, that would have a direct dial to me 24 7 that has knowledge on how to handle things such as. Uh, preparing the easements that uh, the Water and Sewer Commission needs or the Parks Department needs. Uh, so they can take care of a lot of that stuff just like that and then I would just have to proofread uh, what they have done. It will also um, give the public a presence if they wanted to come in and instead of griping at the mayor, grip at the city attorney. So they go and grip at Will. Will could send them down here to talk to me. Um, and then I would try to uh, be available as much as what I could over here at, uh, in the office as well. I certainly probably, I couldn't be here full time and probably couldn't be here half the time, but I would try to be here as much as what I could. So, but to answer your question, there's very, as you can, uh, if you look at the uh, 2015 Arkansas Municipal League, there's only a handful of cities, <coughs> well, maybe 10 or 15 cities that are uh, comparable in size or, or, or bigger than us. So there's not a whole lot of things that you can compare to. I can tell you what Hackett does and Bonanza and Central City and Waldron and Mina. I've represented all those folks before. And they do basically the same thing that uh, we do here. Now Mike's getting it, starting to get into the second issue. I was kind of wanting to keep them in separate issues. Uh, uh, you know, space was the first issue. If you agree that there, th this stuff needs to be moved to City Hall, uh, we maintain office space in City Hall. But then, this is uh, the Arkansas Municipal League Salary Survey, their two 2015 Salary Survey. And it's all the cities in Arkansas down to a population of less than 2,500, I believe. If, uh, if you look on the second page, and you look at Greenwood, You'll notice that what we uh, we pay our city attorney thirty thousand seven hundred forty-three. You'll have to go all the way down to about Whitehall, which is where Radder, Steve Rattery's from. You from Whitehall or Dollarway? 
Whitehall. Okay, I didn't mean to insult you. <laughs> okay, Whitehall is a suburb of Pine Bluff, uh, and Whitehall is half the size of Greenwood, or or little little more than half. And if and they're, they're the figures, y'all can see them. Uh, I th I think when you've got somebody, me and Mike had talked about the fears of of maybe giving him a raise is, you know, Mike can retire. You could retire tomorrow, couldn't you? Yeah. Mike could retire, and the moment he retires, we're going to pay him half from uh, here until he dies. His grandmother lived to 100. Mm, not quite. <laughs> not quite. So, you know, we've got a 27-year municipal attorney, and we're paying him uh, less than when you got to get down to a city the size of Whitehall. Everybody else is more. Uh, we talked about uh, the fear of, you know, boosting his salary up and then all of a sudden he re retires. I, I think sometimes you're going to have to le take a leap of faith and just do the right thing. And I think the right thing would probably not pay him what Whitehall's making, pay him a little more like some of the towns that are a little more like us. Maybe maybe Hope, Batesville, Malvern, I don't know, It'll Marion. Don't look at Malvern, okay. Mountain Home. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, we're close, but we're not there. The other thing is, you know, to get around some of the retirement scares is to do what Mike has asked, to uh, hire a legal assistant. And we could require office hours over here two days a week for the legal assistant to be in the new offices that I'm at, that I asked for in the first issue and to where uh, the Water Commission, the Planning Commission, the Planning Department could walk over and say, hey, this is what I need, and there's actually a face there. Now, that face may not be Mike's, but she or he would have a direct line to Mike, and Mike would say, go ahead and prepare the easement, and I'll, I'll look it over, and I'll sign it. Uh, I think we could get uh, better performance by doing that. I do think, I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't give Mike a raise, I'm saying that we should. We should get him up there a little bit during the 2016 budget. But we also should uh, start looking more at a legal department. One thing, if you look at those salaries, it, you'll notice a, a significant jump when you get up to towns of about oh, 14, 15,000. You'll start seeing some pretty, pretty large salaries. You'll see salaries in the 90s and the 80s. You can tell that's where the full-time lawyers have started. That's where the town has made that slip, and now they have a full-time city attorney. But also with that city attorney, there is also a legal department because there's a workload. We have that workload, uh, and that workload, not being able to meet the expectations of that workload means that we have performance issues, and that's where we have uh, department heads complaining that you know, our city, our legal department's slow. Well, we don't have a legal department. We have Mike, and Mike's very busy. And uh, he's been here 27 years, and the town's growing, and we've got to uh, deal with the growth. Same thing we've done with the police department. Same thing we've done with the fire department. Uh, Let me ask you this. Um, the, it seems like the deeper you get into this discussion, the more you get into the, what do you do about, you're an elected attorney. Mm -hmm. Do you change the way the, the, the government works in, from we don't have an elected attorney, we have a hired attorney? I mean, I guess is that a... Right now, that's not an option because the statu state statute... That so in all these communities, elected. they're elected attorneys? They're all elected. So, so they're, they're conceivably, they're all elected except for Fort Smith. There's a special exception to Fort Smith from the days gone by. They're, they're the only city I know of that's not elected. But you could conceivably have a legal staff, a legal department for the city who does the legal work, and an elected city attorney who Supervisor. signs off on stuff. My roommate in college. That's the part-time job the elected yeah. city guy checks off shows up the meetings those kind of things right. now my roommate in college he's the elected city attorney of north little rock but by ordinance they require him to maintain 
to be there. It's his full-time job, but they pay him very well. Now, he's got a staff of about nine or ten employees. Is that right, Lance? Yeah. I think he's got ten employees, and five of those employees are attorneys that make 85000 90000 a year. Those are five of his employees make that. Uh, Jason, I think he told me and Lance he made 140000 a year. Uh, that's North Little Rock. But still, I mean, whether you're Greenwood, Arkansas, or North Little Rock, you still have a city attorney that's, that's an elected official. There's a, when he gets elected, he walks into a he walks into a, an office, a legal office. The legal office is supplied, and there's office, you know, there's uh, cubicles, and there's office space, and <coughs> desks, and files, and computers, and software, and all that. Well, I think it's a good idea. I think we ought to carve out some space for the legal department. I think when you look at this thing, a, a, a better question to ask of all these communities, which I would be interested in knowing, is what's their what's their legal budget? not just what are they paying their city attorney, but how much is the community spending on a legal department? Because we don't know how many of these people have paralegals, mm -hmm. right? It may be that all these towns are in the 10 to 15,000 range, they may all have paralegals. And when you get up to 25, 26,000, they may have two full time. You know, we don't know. I think that you don't go from, I don't think, I, I don't think you go from paying 30, 35,000 a year to 90, 100,000 a year without some transition in between. And to me, the logical transition is to look for some kind of paralegal that you hire who eventually becomes full-time and then as the workload grows, well then they need some, two paralegals and a full-time attorney. And to me, that's a nice uh, thing to look at. How much does a paralegal make annually? You're probably looking 20, 25,000. So, yeah, so, you know, I mean, you're looking at budgeting for another city employee you know, if you do full time, if you do part time, maybe maybe not so much. But I, I think the idea of establishing a legal department, hiring a paralegal to do some of the um, some of the tasks that would extend Mike's uh, ability to get things done. I think all that's a great idea for this community. I think it's much needed. I think uh, I've watched over the years that I've been up here with Mike. You know, if you work out his hourly rate. For what we pay him for the amount of chasing around he does on all the FOI stuff and other things that he gets asked to chase around, it's he's not making much money on an hourly hourly rate. So, getting him some help if there's some people that can do some of those tasks for him and better utilize his specialized skill set, I think that's a great idea. So, and, and that is okay. that, that has been an issue probably for the last four or five years is the amount of draw on my time plus I have my full time practice as well. Plus, I represent these other cities as well. What and other I, cities do you represent? I represent Central City, uh, Bonanza, and Hackett currently. You need to quit those. <laughs> yeah. I don't they, know. they pay well. I was saying the hourly rate. Right. He's probably doing pretty good. Those other cities, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, well, and I, like I have the good idea. retirement. I like the idea. Of really, mainly of, of moving all of our stuff here. Yeah. Or, or I mean. It, it should be here to begin with, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, should be, it shouldn't be stacked somewhere else. I mean, it should be in that room. I don't mean, know what we're going to do with it, but I think it needs to be on the premises over here that way. If there is something that comes up, then, you know, we've got it here handy. I, I really like that idea. So. Has there been any other discussion about what to do with this space? Not not in this format. I mean, well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm sure there have been some talk. But yeah, not, this, whole, not this, this whole legal department deal, I'm wondering where the administrative duty drops into effect as far as the mayor. I think, I think it's I think it's a lot of it's hit. We budget it. I mean he, and then he can say, okay, I want you in this closet or that closet or this Doug's gotta or, do something. And I think yeah. that creating a department definitely is in the mayor's yeah. responsibility yeah. and not yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think as, as far as the, the space goes, we, we discussed that today too at a department head meeting and, and you're right, there's been a lot of people vying for that space. Not really a lot of people, it's a lot of discussion. And there's ample room. Uh, the police department is leaving behind. I guess I can say that uh, when we're going to work it out, how they're going to leave it behind. But there's uh, cubicles that were in there. We dismantled them. The, the maintenance guys have dismantled them, and they're placed in a little, actually what could be an office even within that office within that room. So to to accommodate uh, the election that's going to happen in there, plus some other things, but. Lots of room. Will's office is going to be is vacated. I mean, we've got lots of room. I do have people within City Hall that need better space. 
Uh, Richard needs more space, so we're going to do some moving with him. Code enforcement, animal control has been working in Sonny's workroom back there. He, that person will need an office. So, but even that, I mean, there's there's lots of space, and there's probably three rooms back there. One, two, two for sure that would accommodate an office as as it is. I mean, it needs some some gussying up, if you will. Know, and, and, file, and, and plenty of room for storage and things like that. So well, that, that's, not, that's not an issue at all. Even if it's something existing moving into this space where they were, yep. it would be a spot for the legal office. Right. I mean, it's right. Lots, lots, of, lots of possibilities. That's, that won't be a problem. But I'd just like to know, I, I, I mean, I, I know that Rod's come up with a, kind of a plan here and whatever, but I'm just, I feel like that the mayor's obviously has an administrative duty to create basically a department, I'm guessing. We'll, we'll, I mean, I don't know well, what. you know, creating departments would be our purview. Uh, we're in charge of, you know, property. This is property. Uh, the mayor can say, Sonny, you can take part of it and all this. I'm just trying to claim a spot for a legal department, which is a new concept. These other departments that are bursting at the seams, the mayor, I think he can, you know, say, you take that corner, you take that corner, election commission's going to do this, that's fine. I'm... I'm proposing a new department. Uh, it's not new, but expanding what we expanding have. Expanding what we have, and I just want to claim so what, some space. So what you're saying, though, you want to do though, so we can we know, is, yeah. is get some numbers yeah. together. Yeah, get with Ann, get, get Mike get to get with Ann and, get with, together, and so with the mayor. And we're looking at having the budget for 2016. And I, I would so say give us. I would say give us three options. One is no paralegal option, which is where you just remodel whatever you need to store stuff and have a space and a desk. And, and then option two would be part-time legal person, two days yeah. a week, whatever, and then full-time. That'd be the three things well, I think I'm, you look at. And then you. I really, I'm, and it may not com got conveyed. I'm, I'm asking for about twenty thousand dollars to to put desks, computers, software. There's some software and stuff to go into this space that and that's one concept the other is legal assistant paralegal whatever you want to call it uh, I think what didn't get conveyed is I would propose and I'm asking for 25,000 for that I would propose that you know that money be paid that we do not hire a city employee that we uh, contracted out through Mike Mike can take an existing paralegal that he uses at his office and say, you work two days at City Hall, you work the other three days over here. Because I think we'll, we'll do better. I think Mike could manage that better than if we hired another city employee. I would prefer that, it, this, is, this is Mike's idea, I'd prefer that it not be a city employee, that we contract through Mike to provide us a paralegal or legal assistant, whatever he wants to call her, two days a week. We, him or her. we can hash out those details as long as the, the task at hand would be get some numbers together so that we got some options in the 2016 budget. Yeah. Now, you can budget 20 for the renovation of the office, but I can't imagine it's going to be that high. I could be wrong. I, I, I don't know. I think between now and then, you and the mayor could get together and put harder figures on Unless you like that lawyer paneling stuff. Yeah. No. We're not putting Wayne's code in. No. <laughs> Mike, do you have 27 years worth of records? <laughs> uh, I probably have about 10. I suppose there's some legal time frame of what we're supposed to keep. Yeah, basically five to seven years, is, but I usually keep ten just to What I'm getting at myself. is there's probably some... I have all of it over I mean, there. You can probably fill that room up with stuff that we don't need, right? Probably. You know what I mean? It's, maybe it's a good time to do spring I've got a closet right? about uh, the size of that portion of your desk, about as five feet tall that I can move over. That's all I had, guys. Uh, Chief Dawson was trying to get recognized. Yep. He wanted to say something. I just want to say, in Mike's defense, but also the time management, our caseload that he prosecutes every Wednesday obviously has increased over the years and preparing for those every Wednesday. Well, well, as we've grown, I think when I started, we probably had three, four police officers. <laughs> and uh, now, in addition to uh, the normal prosecution and so forth, we have everyday personnel issues, not only in one department, but in all departments. Um, the freedom of information uh, 
issues have kind of went away uh, there for a while. That was uh, I was spending literally 40 hours a week just doing nothing but handling those. Yeah, but at any given minute, yeah, he can come back. Yeah. Any given minute, that can crop up just like that. You know, it can. So. And uh, that would also, I know that uh, Steve has been waiting on a on a easement. If I had somebody here at the office, I could send them down to Troy Gaston's office to bug him every day mm -hmm. until he gets that in. But I don't have that capacity now, so I just call his cell phone. He hits <laughs> ignore. <laughs> I think it has merit, but we need to look at the details. Doubles in the details. That's right. On the Mary Davis property, before I forget, I'm told that the deed is in the mail. Awesome. Did you hear that? <laughs> the, on 108 Main, deed is in the mail. Okay. All right, moving right along. Uh, number six, and just so you know, before a director stands up and says that the mayor referred to this as the 2016 mileage ordinance, <laughs> <laughs> it's the millage ordinance, so Mr. City Attorney. This is what we pass every year. Sarla was kind enough to call me and remind me uh, about this. Uh, she also had uh, came up with a proposal to try to save some publication costs and see if we could do this by resolution. There are some cities out there that do it by resolution, but when I talked to the Municipal League, they indicated that although it's not clear and you probably get by with it, they recommended we do it in ordinance form. But Sarla was trying to be cost conscious and save us some money. Um, but this uh, is something we have to pass every October, so we're going to have to go through the whole Make a motion to put this ordinance on, uh, millage ordinance off for first reading by title only. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Did Lance second that? Mm -hmm. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. yes. Make motion we raise second, third reading. Second. Motion to second. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Oh, yeah, I've got to read that. Yeah. The ordinance assessing a five mil tax on real and personal property within the corporate limits of the city of Greenwood, Arkansas, for the year 2016, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Mike Terry? Yes. Make a motion we enact emergency clause. Second. Motion second. Enact emergency clause. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Yes. Motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion to second to adopt. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Thank you. Number seven is uh, reappointment of members to the Planning Commission. Uh, Mr. Bell, have you got that or because I don't have it with yeah. you? Okay. Uh, it's just once a year we have to reappoint the commissioners. Uh, <coughs> time to do that because of the uh, what we would like to do is keep the same commissioners on on there that uh, we have. Uh, we don't have anybody that is requested to be on the board, and the ones that are on there uh, have. Freshly uh, committed to keep giving their time. Just need a motion to reappoint current members. Is that I make a motion we reappoint current members of the planning commission. Steve Rattery, Robert McKinney, and Travis Bartlett. Okay. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Yes. That's not done by resolution. It's just a vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a confirmation. Yeah, we're just kind of, they're doing a good job. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Um, number eight, finance. Miss Eglinsdorfer, I keep calling you Miss Finance. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, and this is a resolution, as I stated earlier. The insurance on the building and property came in at $2,106.19, higher than we have budgeted, so we need to uh, increase our line items 64415, insurance building and property, and funding is available in 10200 cash and bank general fund. I always ask this, and I usually always get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> 
We do, we do a yearly shop around for insurance on things, look for lower rates, such and such. Not all, not usually, no. We're going to on health for 16. I don't know if he's going we tomorrow. we did a little bit of that this year, and I get in trouble too, by the way. Uh, but we did a little bit of that this year, and and as it turns out, I uh, don't know that we were, were but anyway. We're going to do more of that in the future. And well, certainly, and not I mean in everything. I mean, I, I right. we always use Michael Jong. Right. We always use Brixie, and I'm, I'm guessing that Osborne has a building, or I don't know. It's split between Osborne, Osborne and, and okay. Basham. And, that's and, and we went through a period of looking at that. I had I had a local, uh, had someone bring prices. As soon as I became mayor, of course, everybody comes in and says, hey, let me say something, mm -hmm. which is normal. That's okay. And then I encouraged them all to bring quotes back in. Uh, weren't necessarily shopping, but there was a quote that came in. And it was, at the end of the day, it was not apples to apples. So, it, it, and, and we didn't discuss this, but it, it, it looked like we could save a tremendous amount of money. and. And I was, can't pass this up, got to look into it. And, and at the end of the day, we weren't quite there. So this year, we're going to look back at that again. And, and I think my job, one, number one, is to make sure that we're getting the best deal for the best money, for the amount of money we pay, whatever it is, insurance or whatever. So we'll continue to do that for sure. I, I, I always like, love, been here all my life, and will continue to like local vendors. And that's why we looked at that local mm -hmm. vendor issue. But, Wow, if we if we can save a whole lot of money, we got to look at everything too. So. You think it'd be kind of reciprocal, where if we use local vendors, we'd get a five percent discount. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, not a not a bad deal. Maybe we, I mean, we can fly that. flow in here and yeah. let her do her little speech. Yeah. Progressive. That's right. <laughs> Might get on a, in a commercial or something. I'll make a motion. We pass this resolution. Second. And a motion and a second. Dr. Johnson. Yes. Powell. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Secretary. Yes. Yes. And the next one is within the street fund. Uh, it was insurance vehicles. We need to increase 64410 by $825. <coughs> and funding is available in 62450 street lighting. Same insurers? This is through Osborne. They handle our vehicles. I'll make a motion. We pass this resolution. Second. Motion to second. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Sure. Yes. Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Yes. And the next one is um, one that the mayor had asked me to put in. It's to provide funding for the Arkansas Municipal League's non CDL employee drug testing program. The cost of it is $1,790.40. We would need to increase 63020. Fees, dues, and memberships, and funding is available within 10200 Cash and Bank General Fund. Does the heading need to be changed up there on there? Uh, where is it? What does it say? Yes. <laughs> it's not increasing not information. No, oh, yeah. <clears throat> I ran across. That's the reason I went on and passed it a while ago. And if, I don't know if anybody has any questions regarding this, but it, it, this is kind of a growing pain thing I, I see, and, and, and Brooke knows more than I do regarding this, is as we grow and as we, as we grow and as we grow, we keep running into issues, or some issues, and, and I think this is just a little better protection for us overall of what we're trying to accomplish and taking care of our, our citizens with uh, good employees. So, what <clears throat> participation in non-CDL drug testing program? Work you want to address? Most employees are protected by one of the minimum requirements of the Arkansas Medical Board Act, which is that they have to have a medical license and they have to have a testing um, drug testing for pre-employment 
on people that are not CEO drivers. Right now, you can only test for people that drive for like public transit, police officers, firefighters. And there may be some in the street department, we just don't have those defined yet. This is only pre-employment? This is the question. Wow. <laughs> well, definitely free employment. Um, this is where we found out we can't because there are some uh, recent uh, court cases in 2014 that have shed some light on this that you can't just it's considered a search when you're taking their urine and their testimony. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's a very gray area it's, of the law that's continually changing. Yeah, right? we're kind of a double-edged sword. You don't want to, you know, be found for negligent hiring, but then you you can't, you know, go against these people's Fourth Amendment. It's just... But it's not, it's not random drug testing for existing employees, right? Well, them too. Yeah, we can't, Could, we can't do random drug testing on public employees. We can or cannot? We cannot. But this doesn't allow you to do it, right? Yes. It, yeah. Yeah, it's not random. Which I don't mind. I'm just saying. Yeah, right, we right. We really want to catch them on the front end. Right. It seems what better place to have the drug testing done than the Arkansas Municipal League, especially if it's a gray area and it's constantly yeah. changing. Well, they're the lawyers that are going to defend us, so if right. they get us in a lawsuit, Tough, you know, y'all defend us. Court cases, and when I proposed this question for them, I was like, well, it's just really, it's really gray area. Because so you're telling me currently if we hire someone to work for the city agreement, we can't drug test them or we don't? We shouldn't. We Both. shouldn't drug test them. <laughs> can't, they shouldn't, have, not supposed to. to. Yeah. <laughs> how's that for, how's that for, how's that for gray? Oh, so if you just hire a guy to, Mow for the parks department. You can't drug test him pre, and that's. Hmm. I'm just wondering how like factory. What's the difference in us and like where I work? I get drug tested before I get hired in the factory. In the private sector, this is this is something that's only afforded to public employees. Okay, so this will allow us to start drug testing pre-employment. Mm -hmm. I make a motion. We pass this resolution. Second it. Have a motion and a second. Thank you, Brooke. The I don't like drugs. With a change to that title there. Change the title. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Ms. Terry? Yes. 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 Thank you. And then the last one I have is an ordinance to uh, <coughs> update our check signers. Um, I know we have just done this uh, just recently, but we need to make another change. One of the people we assigned um, has backed up. So we'd like to do it with the city clerk treasurer, director of finance, parks director, and wastewater plant supervisor as the four check signers on the account. Two of the four must sign all checks. Okay. Following people, city clerk treasurer, director of finance. So we pulled the Let me ask you a question. This shows uh, the water wastewater supervisor, City of Greenwood. Them being employees of the Water Commission, does that change that? I asked that tonight. <laughs> well, Mr. Hammond probably. I don't they're, know. They're, they're still employees of they're the city. They're not employees of the Water Commission. They're employed right. by but the, the department heads are still employed by the city. They report to the commission. There's some nuances there, correct? I mean, right. they're technically still a city employee. Technically, they're still city employees. Correct. Right. Right. correct. And I asked that question recently to Mr. Hamby, but I didn't get it. It's the answer. same issue with the parks director. I mean, we have parks commission as well, so the parks directors. Yeah. yeah. And a good majority of the time, it is city clerk treasurer and myself. Yeah. But if one of us is out, then we do need somebody else. What well, would we drop the cop for? Because they moved? Yes, we're trying to make it more convenient with someone that's in the building. Um, I trust. Close. Close you. I don't know. That sounds like Richard and Greg could get together and start writing a bunch of checks. And <laughs> no, they don't write them. <laughs> yeah, they're drug testing. They don't write them. <laughs> make a motion to put this uh, ordinance on for first reading by title only. Second. <coughs> motion and a second. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Why Terry? Hang on a minute. I, I'm... This check thing's got crazy. We have like 900 people signing uh -huh. checks. 
um, you know, we haven't ever done it in the past, but I'm trying to figure out, well, I know why we've done it in the past, but I'm trying to figure out why the mayor don't sign the checks again. Well, you're just assuming not. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean that's part of the you know what I'm saying. I just don't. I've never ever. I know why we did it the first time. Right. I know exactly why we did it, and everybody else does too. Sitting up here, but, but we got a whole bunch of people that can sign checks. That I mean, I'm not saying they're bad people, but it's just uh, seems kind of weird to me. You got Charlotte, and you got Ann, and I mean that can sign the checks. To me, you need, if one of them ain't around, you you need one more and be done with it instead of. One, two, three. There's four. There's four. And, and, you know, and then, I mean, just, I don't know. Well, it's no, conceivable my, for my sure. My answer to the, your vote is no. I, I just don't like it. You, you say if, the, if in the event the clerk, treasurer, director of finance is unavailable, mayor designates the park director, the parks director as a substitute. Look. But the parks director is listed. There. No. He's number four, basically, is what that's trying, I think is what that said, is trying to say yes. In the, in the yes. event Parks Director is not here, and I'm not here, not, she's not here, whatever, then the Water Wastewater Plant Supervisor would be the signer. So the one we go to most of the time would be the one that's in this building, which is Parks Director. Does that make sense? And if he's not here, we would call on? Then we would call on. Yeah. Or three, I said four, I'm sorry. And I, I've asked that question too before because I said an elected official makes sense to sign the checks. They're the ones that answer to the state, the state laws. They're, they're, more, we're they're more answerable, you know, or have more. Do we want to, weren't we? It's on the line. broad at one time, didn't we sign checks? I mean, we were and authorized to sign checks. Yeah. I think I did back. at one time. It's just think, uh, inconvenient for you guys think, coming in. I think over at Hackett, they sign checks because they give him his check during mm -hmm. the meeting. But we're a little beyond that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I don't want to sign yeah, checks. Yeah, we, we've moved. We've, we've got bigger since you left, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the things have got, <laughs> yeah, yes. the things have got a little so, more right. complex. Well, all, we're, all we just did was pass it for first reading by title only. I know there's an emergency clause on there, but how emergent is it? I mean, can we just leave it on for first reading by title only and then come back and visit it next month? And you maybe can, all could but right now we only have two around. signers. And so if I'm gone and she's just Well, no, we to, have an ordinance no, in place, right? the other two are not going to sign. They've, one they've, of them has its signed the signature card and the other one's told well, not to sign. Y'all don't need to I get guess. paid for the next three months, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anything to get her done? I mean, I, I know the police has moved up on the hill, but I don't see how hard it is to make a phone call. I mean, y'all ain't, I mean, I know y'all busy. But somebody can come down here and sign some checks. I mean, that ain't rocket science. I mean, I, I mean. We're just trying to make it easier for processes around here. They're just no, put the fire that, chief on there. Still, but they're still they're still part of the city, no matter what. Whether they moved out on Highway 71, I mean, we'll still. I, that's just my that's my personal opinion, and you can take well, anyway. You can take everyone. Well, the motion passed, so I guess I'll read it. Right. <laughs> yes. An ordinance repealing ordinance 15-16 establishing the signing of checks to the city of Greenwood, Arkansas, for other purposes. And so we need to go ahead and go through with the emergency clause then that we're at. Um, I make a motion we suspend the rules of waive second, third readings. I second it. Motion and second. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Nope. Passes. Thank you. I make a motion to adopt. I make a motion to adopt the order. Second it. Motion and second to adopt. <coughs> Who's second? Robert. Robert. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Vice Terry? No. Passes. You need a motion to enact the emergency clause. I'm making a motion we enact the emergency clause. Second. We have a motion and a second to enact the emergency clause. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Tim Terry? Yes. Vice Terry? No. It passes. Done deal. It's your children. Good. Thank you. Uh, number 12, Parks Department. Resolution. For your ordinance authorizing us to enter into the contractual agreement. Just. For your ordinance. Can 
Municipal Ministry. We and our friends of our fall fest uh, last weekend we did a search around for some of the supplies for the uh, public address systems or the old band. We'll have to bring all their own equipment in. They can just plug into it. And we do some pricing around. We came in about 60% below everybody else, so we opted to go with them. And then we noticed that we didn't have an ordinance on record because of the relationship with the mayors. Richard, I'm sorry. What did you say this equipment's for? What it was we... for the sound system of the bands. He routinely sets up in the uh, the pavilion up on top of the hill, so his equipment was compatible. For the fall festival. For the yeah. fall festival that we just finished up. And how much? How much was you said? Three hundred dollars for them to supply the equipment and stay with it all day long. I'll make the a motion. Next, the next bid we came in at eight hundred dollars. Yeah, I'll make a motion with this. Ordinance on first reading of title only. Motion second. Yes. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Secretary? Yes. Secretary? Yes. Unanimous. An ordinance authorizing the city of Granville to conduct business with Corey Kins Loan Ministries declaring an emergency in Granville. Make motion we suspend rules, wife, second, third reading. Second. Motion and second. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. 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 What's the, what would be the emergency, Richard? The emergency. Right. <laughs> I'm going to wait around. Oh, you've already done it. They already did it. Motion to adopt the okay. ordinance. I second it. Motion second to adopt. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Any motion we enact the ordinance? For the emergency, emergency clause. Emergency. I second it. Motion second to enact the emergency clause. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Terry, yes. I wish we would have added some wording in there to hold him to the low rate, even if the mayor yes. gets. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, he could probably work that out with him. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We will move to the department. This is normally where I adjourn, but yeah. we'll move right up to the department reports and questions from council. So, Ann, if you'd like to go first. It would be nice. Don't say it. It would be nice. <laughs> Just to do I'm assuming you're going to plan, even even though I know the last few years have been good to us and we've had a year to date, year over year increase each year, I'm assuming you're still budgeting flat. It's, it's only four, right at 4%. But you budgeted flat for how many years running now? Four or five. This is the third year. Right. And we were up three, almost 4% last year as well. And then. Mm -hmm. Last year's right, but I mean, I encourage you. I want to keep I mean, doing it. I want to keep. I don't. Just I don't. Case, I want you. To, I don't either. Fine. I want you to do it. I just want to make sure we're doing it flat, right. just like that we've done the last few years. Good deal. 
And then I didn't know if you guys wanted to start scheduling study sessions now or if you want to wait till the next council meeting and schedule them for another event. I would say when you get your budgets back from the department heads, that it would that depend that? on that. I mean, you know, it may be, it may take a little while to get those back, but I don't want to wait. I'd rather go ahead and hammer it out. And All right, so at the next council meeting, I'll have some, yeah. hopefully have them back and um, be able to, to set them. And I also wanted to take this opportunity to let you know that I take great pride in my position here and that I'm committed to making the best um, sound, educated decisions I can as far as protecting the city's money. Thank you. You're doing a good job, Ann. You're doing a good job, Ann. Thank you, Ann. Uh, if I may add just a little bit on the on the planning of these uh, budget study sessions, I know it's not my call to make, and it's certainly the council's sessions that we do. If and I know everybody makes the effort that they can, uh, but this could be that magical year to get this done. Before <laughs> I know I'm, I'm trying. Oh, there you go, chocolate, and they will come. Okay, look at I can see Daniel's mind. So, okay. Can I say something about that? You sure can. I wasn't going to say this until you said that. No. But the, the, the mayor and I went last meeting up to the school board meeting just to observe what went on at the school board learn? meeting. And, and we talked to some of those. Uh, people afterwards and we talked about specifically the budget and how they handle their budget and uh, what the process of all that is and and long story short of all that is the school board doesn't really nitpick that a whole lot you know what I mean the, they, they trust the administration and the people they've hired to do their jobs um, and I, I'm not saying let's don't look at the budget but I have sat through painful meetings that went on and on for hours and we nitpicked whether the street department needed a set of wrenches and all of, you know, I don't need to tell Chief Dawson what he needs to run the police department. We hired him to be the police chief to make those decisions. And it's a lot more in my mind, I would like to see us not go through that process again and you know and, and I you know again I think that we have a responsibility obviously to manage the budget to know what the budget is to know what we're spending our money on but I think we need to let our department heads bear the department heads as well so my two cents well, we don't normally nitpick until they're over budget yeah, we have to try to yeah. figure out to get them back you in. come in over budget that's a whole new discussion yeah it, it has been better. Yeah, we've lost a lot of faith in our department heads. We got a bunch of commissions. <laughs> I don't think, uh, Daniel. I don't think we argue that much about what they're what they've done. You know, I think pretty much we take last year's in the past and assume that that's going to be that. It's the extra that we always argue about, and yeah. the extra is because everybody's wanting a lot of that extra, and there's not that much extra. Well, that's the argument. We always but, want yeah. uh, it, pet projects. The, yeah, and and. The, the constitution of the administrative government here and, and the folks that are sitting at this table changes over time and and uh, this was a lot more painful process my first year on council and second year on council and third year than it was the last couple of years I think we're getting better a little bit at that I agree so hopefully hopefully it'll be hopefully it'll be a good easy process for us when we hammer it out and get done and that's part of why I brought up the legal department this tonight just to get you your feelings to see if we wanted to waste the time preparing stuff because a lot of times things get prepared and then we spend a lot of time taking it back out and if y'all want it taken back out then that's fine let's just move on and leave the office space out of the argument leave the uh, legal assistant out you know that's fine I mean just move on we don't need to fight about it let's just take it out and move on but, that's part of the reason I brought it up. My main thing, what I like looking at it is because you know I've always preached do it, do it right, do it right. Instead of skipping somewhere, I want to make sure that, you know. For example, the time Joe bought the bulldozer, you know, I mean he was going to get one that we got to put a five gallon bucket for a seat. You know, if we hadn't looked at it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. And you know I share your opinion in that way, that respect too. So. And that's my only thing. Just I, don't, I mean I don't have a clue what 
some needs and will and in and so I, I mean like I said you're right you're 100 right let do the job but we got to a good not battling it out over that stuff yeah. oh thank you yes sir mr sunny bell you are next thank you Ann. sunny sunny <laughs> Fair Council Mr. Terry, Mike. Uh, first thing on, on uh, bring an update on last month, you know, we lost Chelsea. Uh, we've been in the process of uh, getting resumes uh, sent to us, and we got a bunch of resumes sent to us, but we, we've uh, uh, whittled them down to what, group four, three? We got three, and we're going to set up. Uh, uh, some interviews uh, hopefully this week and uh, uh, myself and I'd like to get uh, Lieutenant Hobson or one of the other guys to sit down with us because this, this position is a uniform position and he's, uh, he is uh, requested to write citations from time, from time to time so we want to make sure that we get the right person in, in the job and we've got some good applicants. <coughs> In September, I attended the MBO meeting in Fort Smith to discuss uh, future and, and current projects uh, uh, along with uh, the MPO, the Arkansas State Highway Department, Oklahoma Highway Department, and Federal Highway uh, representatives there talking about future funding from the federal government, which has uh, been real tight here lately. Uh, we approved a draft for the Metropolitan Transportation Plan and uh, approved the update for the regional trail plan and wayfinding signs. Uh, Mayor and I attended a regional chamber meeting held in Hodo this last month at a coal conference uh, in Mansfield. And uh, uh, the coal conference, of course, this is the second time I've been to it, and, and I can almost give the, the PowerPoints at this point, but uh, the very good information on uh, how essential the coal industry is in this part of the country and how what a boon it would be if uh, the EPA would allow them to start uh, digging coal again. Uh, I, I had no idea coming from another part of the state the coal reserves that we've got up here and we're very fortunate that the coal reserves just over on the other side of Hackett is uh, some of the most sought after coal uh, in the country because it's used for metallurgy not used for fires and, and power plants. It's used in the metal industry, and so it's a, I think there's only two in the country, and this happens to be one of them. The uh, building department had two new housing starts this month, one accessory building, two pools, two remodels, and one addition for a construction value of 614,380. If you probably all noticed the updates on Greenwood Picture Company, it's going going well and we finished the repairs of the roof they're cleaning up the outside i'm not sure if they're painting it or not but it sure looks like they are if they're not if, they, if, if not they're power working it uh the uh and plus the parking lot and, and clean up all around they've done a great job on uh the owner has spent probably 250 dollars uh, on it at this point and he's still is holding a $75,000 reserve for anybody that uses it for building their offices on the inside the way they want. Um, he's also on the property behind Franklin Victor, where the old rock building is on Denver Street, and he's interested in coming up with some kind of a project for that, possibly duplexes or small apartment complex. But uh, also, I want to mention next uh, Monday uh, night at the Planning Commission. James Walden, I don't know if y'all remember or not, he was uh, uh, worked with uh, Kim Von Cogan. He's coming down to speak to the Planning Commission on uh, overlay projects, uh, overlay zone, excuse me. That way, Greenwood, as you know, we've got some commercial areas that right in the middle of this kind of house that somebody lives in. And then you got another business and then another house that somebody lives in. Well, sometimes those, the people that own those homes want to sell the home but they don't they want to sell it to another person that wants to live it. well if it's no commercial they can't get financed as a resident and so in the past we've we've offered variances for those uh, types of situations 
and with the overlays, we can do that without doing variances. And also, we're looking at to do a new kind of an industry, a new thing coming up, and they're called cottage homes. And that's the small homes, uh, 800 to 1,200 square foot. And uh, we would, we're looking at if they, we'd like to put it on, you know, as a zone so that we could uh, regulate them and put them in certain areas in clusters, say four to six or something like that. They're basically like a two-bedroom apartment that are separated from the next apartment. They're, they're very nice. Uh, Brooke and, and uh, the mayor went over to Mulberry and looked at them. Uh, they're a little expensive, but I mean, there might be a, a place for them, and I'd like to be more proactive and, and come up with some zoning on it in case somebody comes in and says, I want to do some cottage homes. Go ahead. Sonny, could you tell me what was the day again that he's coming? Next Monday. Next Monday. What time? Uh, it'll be at 6 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Uh, but anyhow, we're, I'm looking at that too. But all this back here, uh, I want to hand this out to you because I want your help. And that is, some months ago, Rod uh, challenged me <laughs> I did. to uh, come up with a way that we could uh, regulate our uh, rental homes that uh, we have in this in the town. And this is what I've come up with. I, I talked to the municipal league and, and other communities and told them what I was looking for and got their suggestion. Uh, Rod suggested that we would inspect all rental homes as they turned over. And uh, the people that I talked to said, well, that's, you, there's no, no way to truly enforce that. And so they recommended going to a, uh, a complaint-driven uh, enforcement. That way, if you look at this packet, uh, I, I, the first thing is a cover letter on there, but uh, the second thing uh, is a minimum guide for property owners. This not only covers rental property uh, or rental homes, it covers apartments, it covers duplexes, it covers rooming houses, it covers any type of building in the city of Greenwood with a minimum standard. Our other ordinance, all, uh, when we talked about a dilapidated house or an unsightly house, it says the mayor and his representative will make that determination. Well, my idea of unsightly and, and dilapidated house might be different than, than you guys. So this gives us what is an unsightly home, what is unhealthy, what is unsanitary. And we've got one in town now that Mike just discussed that if you don't believe it's unhealthy, you don't just stick your head in it. I mean, it's terrible. And so this would give us more teeth on the front end so that when we do want to go in and, and tear down a dilapidated house, we've got the reasoning behind it. The windows aren't doing this. The doors aren't doing this. There's no ventilation, heating, air conditioning, and electric. You know, Sonny, since that challenge that I forgot about, uh, <laughs> We went on a fire in a rental house that had an overloaded uh, breaker box. You were there, Dustin. I know Lance was there. And of course, they were renting. It was low income. They were Hispanic. They had no way out of it. They had uh, no way out of it. You know, it's, it was on a Friday evening, wasn't it? And uh, of course, you know, you can't get a fire department shows up, but you can't get a hold of the landowner so they what do they do and you know we we're saying you can't go back in uh, you kind of wonder what are they going to do uh, and they're they're renting and you know it's obviously it was a shabby add-on and uh, they've been doing you know the owner's been in there doing things that were not permitted so how do you catch it so, well for example let's see here that that will be on the on the website, it's a mental housing complaint form. Somebody can pull this off the internet and call me, uh, and, and they can write out a complaint. Say these people that live in that house you're talking about, they can, if they have a complaint about the exterior, the interior, wiring, or whatever, they can make a, a formal complaint. Or if the enforcement officer sees a house that he that it's an obvious from the outside that something's going going on there. 
and he can make a determination on the outside if he feels like it's something on the inside for the plumbing, electrical, uh, heating, and air that he can get the building inspector to go with him that can say this is substandard wiring. You know, you, you we're cutting you off. You know, you've got so many days that to fix this, or we're going to find them. And in the back part of the the big thick ordinance, it has the fines and the time that. Uh, you have to make these corrections. But uh, it also addresses, like I said, the outside of the house, the trash, uh, abandoned vehicles. Uh, what, I, what I would like for you to do is take this with you and look at it, and then next month, uh, I would like to put it on, you know, as an ordinance for the first reading. Uh, and that would give you guys time to, to give me some input on this. You, know, you might like it all. You might want to say, hey, you know, you let this out. You know, we need to change this or whatever. The thing I like about it is it even, it covers my house. If, if I allow my house to deteriorate, the code, the code enforcement officer and the building inspector can come and, and write me up and find me until I get those things taken care of. It's not just rental property. This covers our parking complex up here. It covers the duplexes that you see around town. It covers uh, Mr. Gish's uh, uh, apartment building over here on Main Street. It covers any type of dwelling in the city of uh, Greenwood. And I think it's a way that we can we can lock this down and it gives us teeth to our code enforcement to be able to go up there and, and write these up. And it also gives us like like uh, Roger talked about it, it gives the people that live in these places a way out, a way to get their what they're paying for uh, to be safe, be healthy. So this would need to be adopted by ordinance? Yes, it would be an ordinance. Is that, you already have the ordinance prepared? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's it's not not number, but, sure. uh, it is handed to you. Yeah, that is. It's written up as an ordinance. So you already have this ready to adopt. Well, but I don't want it adopted as a, you know, sure. I want input. I want, uh, you know, that's pretty like, okay, Mike a copy of everybody, all you guys are sitting out there, and I'll get AC a copy of it. Did you get a planning? Have you run this through the planning commission? Well, I, this, is, this is more of a council function than it is a planning. Okay. So planning is is just what it says. It's planning the future okay. growth of, of Greenwood. This this is a regulation, uh, regulation of an ordinance that covers the safety and the welfare of the citizens of Greenwood. I felt like this was more in your guys' responsibility than the planning department. If if I I'll email you if I, I'll review it and email you any questions or suggestions, yeah, right? If you don't hear from me, then I like it as it is. Well, and I want Charlotte. Charlotte's my proofreader. I don't care what I do, she can find a mistake in it. So, you know, but I hate to hear with this thing because it, it's quite extensive, but uh, uh, it may be, you know, a paragraph or a page or two at a time that she can make some changes on it and find out all my misspelled words and things Just like email that. it to me. I'll go through it with the highlight. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I just buzzed through it. I'm not a speed reader, but I can hit the high points. And I love every word of it. I, I especially went straight back to section 11 with the penalty because I, most of the time we pass th things like this and it's dollar a day and it's $25 a year, whatever. And so you've got some teeth back here. I like money. Yeah. I like finding people. I do too because it, it gets their attention. Yes, sir. So I, my only suggestion is for sure, obviously, that Mr. Hamby needs to get a good look see at this, but. I really like this a lot, Sonny. I agree with what Tim's saying, and, and I'm look. I looked at the fines, and then in section six, you get to a point of, of, of demolition. Yeah. But I don't see what the time period is, and I'm again, I haven't had time to look at it. But is there a, a time? Yeah. I mean, the I see the fines <laughs> progress. Days, you know, before we get to demolition. And, you know, and, and uh, if if you don't adhere to the ordinance, you face a de demolition of the building where it could have been saved if you had gone, you know, 
through the steps and made these changes. It also says that if you rent a, uh, an apartment with a window air conditioner in it and it doesn't work, you've got to fix it. If it's not in there, you don't. But if you've implied that it's air conditioned when they rent it, and so you have to maintain it. And, you know, that's, that's part of renting Oh. Now, you, let me ask you this: that, What you just said right there is there not already something? I know renters have better rights than a normal citizen. Just really, I, not not really, Tim. That, you know, uh, they really don't have that kind of right. So we have people call and say, you know, my ceiling's falling in, and I've got bugs all over the place, and and all this, and we have to tell them, I'm sorry, but you, you know, you need to go get your attorney and sue the person that that's renting it to you. Of course, the renter, the guy that owns it, says, if you don't like it, move out. Right. Well, we can stop that. We can okay. let, it's, it's, you're, we're creating a non-healthy environment for not only people that are in there, but for any future teacher. You're not going to be able to rent this house again until you do this, this, and this. Sonny, if I were to fill out the complaint form, minimum housing complaint form, that's what would get the process started, right? Mm -hmm. And I were to say that if you turn on Adeline Court, the second duplex on the left has wire nuts on all the connections up in the attic and the, and the uh, dryer vents ventilated to the attic. Are y'all going to tell them who, I, who called? No. No. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, in the not that the second duplex on the left in Adeline Court has all this. Yeah, if you'll notice up the top it says, please note all complaint information is kept confidential by our office. We appreciate the effort that you have put forward to maintain quality housing in the city of Green. Uh, yeah, it asks for their name and address at that stage. Okay. Doesn't go out. And like I said, this will be available across the counter. It'll be available to our the code enforcement officer to fill out themselves are on the web. Now you'll notice the next thing is a guideline of minimum property standards for property owners. Any any person that comes in that we you know that rents homes and we'll post this on the internet too, they'll know this is the minimum standards that they're gonna have to have with the rental house before they ever rent it. And it's, you know, it's black and white. They don't could you uh, proactively, once this ordinance is passed, could you proactively go through the city and say we're inspecting these dwellings? Really? Without you complaint? You know, you could, but you, you put yourself in, in uh, there's been some lawsuits for people, for cities that have tried that, and there's, you know, how do you identify those? And, you know, well, the first thought is, well, when somebody comes in and, and gets the water, change the water meter over, we'll know that, you know, got somebody moving in there. And so they say, well, what happens is the people that own the rent houses say, I'm going to raise your rent up $15 or $20 or whatever, and I'll keep the water in my name. So you don't know when they're moving. How? So, like I said, it's going to be. But you know, I mean, for example, you know the apartment buildings throughout the yeah. town. And once we pass this ordinance, you could say we have new standards for rental property. That's what I would do. And, and send this to the yeah. owner of that yeah, property. Yeah, I think about, you know, the, the apartment complex and say, here's our minimum standards. As uh, is, is we find or, or know of uh, somebody that has a rental house or a bunch of rental houses. They would be sent this. Uh, you know, it's going to, I want it to be well publicized so that somebody who well, I didn't know that, you know, it, it's, uh, like I said, it's, uh, there's no way that we can enforce so, uh, somebody to come in and change the batteries on your smoke detector if you're running that, that apartment. But if he doesn't and something happens, he is bound by this because that was part of the ordinance and he was supposed to do that. What's going to keep, what's going to keep, say, I'm, say I'm renting from Rod, and I get hacked off. I put one of those bills out and I bring it down here, and you get mad, well, I'm going to kick you out. Well, you can't just kick him out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, and you, if you come out clean, you're clean. But I'm just saying, if, I mean, once they go through, you're clean. Well, what you're saying, 
He's going to have a big right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you, you have rights. Then you're going to have that domestic. You got and then uh, we'll rights in another direction. <laughs> well, the eviction laws in the state of Arkansas are pretty strong. Well, yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm telling Tim. I mean, a renter, I mean, to, to get a renter out is, I mean, it's like, it's, on, it's like pool of teeth. I mean, so, I'll tell you. You know, if I fill this out, it seems like everything's FOIable, and I fill this out saying up on Mount Harmony Road, I was in an attic, and there's Vietnam War era blasting caps. There's C4 blasting caps in a box up behind the chimney, and I fill this out. How do I know I'm protected? This, this is not FOIable. Now, that's, that, that's a like Andy question. I know that in the past that uh, when somebody uh, has made complaints one way or the other, we would tell them, you know, that we, we wouldn't give out their name. Yeah, a very complex analysis that you have to go through. Chief Dawson and I have to do that every once in a while <coughs> as well when he receives complaints. So, so if I fill this out, it's not, a, it's but most likely not. Right, well, I can't answer yes or no. I'd have to look at the circumstances and be on a case by case basis. If you found right. that during the course of your duties as a fireman, it would be different too, wouldn't it? Yeah. No, I'm talking about my duties just <laughs> being up in attics. Yeah, yeah. you don't get started there. You find some strange stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but anyhow, uh, we'll talk about it more next time. Sure. Yeah. Well, I believe something I appreciate any suggestions. There's some bit in the air. Any other questions? Blasting caps. Looks great. Yes. Yeah. Where are <laughs> what's, what's the road that turns up to the water water plant? I think the house is sold, so I think I'm clear. First house on the right. By the fireplace. Two. And then you go up there and go back a little deep back there. All righty. <laughs> Richard, did you want to report tonight? We talked earlier and I can't remember what it was about. Was there something that you needed to? Oh, clock tower questions. I just. I think they update wouldn't. Update on them, I guess. Because I mean, got four big holes up there in the pot. <laughs> you know what? I've Perfect. never noticed that. It's. Uh, as you've noticed on the clock tower repair, that's a contract you guys authorized about 36000 fix that structure, the <laughs> clock faces are out, fire department system and getting those down uh, safely. They're over at the Ridgecrest facility where we cleaned up, covered it with uh, allergy and things like that when places leak. Good letters need to be completely repainted and probably do all of them just so that look consistent. Uh, the workings are being taken care of in Cincinnati. The representatives have already been here, climbed up in the tower, looked everything over, and everything looks fine. We'll wait to put all those spaces back in after the construction company finishes repairing the cracks because they'll be swinging the equipment around up there. We don't want those plastic clock spaces up there or $15,000 worth of clockworks mm -hmm. drug off or something. We're good. The uh, mail came out Tuesday morning this last week, about 125 ton crane downtown. Reached over and snatched it out. <coughs> the mail is now out in the street parking. If you want to look at it, it's 1917. Uh, mail made specifically for the South Thomas clock. I think those, they cast those uniquely for the application. It looks like it has a couple of layers of silver paint on it. It's a bronze bell. It's been mm -hmm. So, sure. <laughs> Study the restoration of those old bells. And there's some heat techniques you put on them. You clean them up, you wash them, put a torch on them, and then you put regular clear like paste wax, Johnson paste wax on there. And it sucks it inside the pores and you have to do that every three months. So I don't know that we're going to do that. I don't plan on climbing that every three months until the very top. But anyway, it's all on schedule, looking good. Camp leaders just almost done waiting for some concrete dyes, but straight up to go. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Chief Dawson. <laughs> you just checking to see if I knew your name, weren't you? Not not Larry Not Larry not not the Rhodes' house. Not Melanie's. The one across the street.
I think it's I think it's changed enough hands now, and I've been paid enough that I mean I've been paid and everything. I, 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 so, if, you, if you know, if you know them, they need to go up there. There's some, there's, vet, there's some Vietnam War era blasting caps that when I was in the military that you insert in C4, there's enough blasting caps that it'd catch the attic on fire. I mean, make a big boom, right? So, I, I guess we live in such, and I guess we're living close enough proximity of of Fort Chaffee that just junk has been over the years just brought into Greenwood and shoved up into attics and you just that's one of them. In the month of September the respondents 272 calls had 20 accidents issued 132 tickets and 123 warnings. CID had 20 new cases assigned they closed 15 cases for the year, they've had uh, 199 cases assigned with 188 closed for a 95% closure rate. For training, uh, Sergeant Pippen is going to the SLES, uh, which is School of Law Enforcement Supervision. It's uh, CJI's distinguished program for mid-level uh, supervisors. And he goes one week for uh, several months before he uh, graduates from that. <clears throat> Austin McConnell's uh, going through the DRE process, drug recognition expert, which I uh, think I explained before, they get called in when someone's already influenced the drugs, do a lot of different testing from blood pressure, uh, pupil size, uh, a lot of different things to uh, determine what type of narcotic they're on. Mason Redding. Uh, was sworn in on September 21st, and he is in the second week of the academy down there in Camden. Uh, we'll have 12 more to do after this week. I attended the FBI National Academy uh, retrainer for symposium. It was 24 hours uh, on Pettyjean Mountain. And Officer Morton went to a 24-hour uh, basic crime scene uh, investigation class. Like I said, for uh, special events or, or uh, different events that we've attended uh, last month, we did have the swearing-in ceremony for Mason on September 18th at the new police department. On September 21st, we had the ribbon cutting and uh, tour to those that attended. Lieutenant Driscoll spoke at the high school career fair. I spoke on uh, Jim Reynolds' radio show open carry, which uh, the Attorney General came out a couple days later and gave her opinion, which was basically the same thing I, I felt that uh, that new law meant, how I interpreted that. Now Joe, uh, Joseph, uh, or Joey Deer, uh, he helped with that shirt of wealth homicide and was very key in helping uh, solve that homicide and him and uh, Detective Crouch worked at crime scene for a couple of days with uh, another sheriff's office call and said how good a job he did. Uh, I wanted to mention that to Joey. Uh, the last thing that I have is I uh, just want to say thank you for that day with Trayton. It was a very stressful day and thank you for those that showed up there and, and uh, talked to Doc about uh, the aftermath of that. And, one man for trade because he went back to playing football, which I now have a new feeling in my stomach that I had during football games. <laughs> never had. It just makes me nervous. But uh, I appreciate you guys being here in the calls. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. We're very happy Trayton's okay. Chief Brian. Mayor, Mr. Derrick, Mr. Hamby, Council. Uh, we had 61 department responses during September. Uh, our training, we had uh, completed structures two, protective systems, fire and life safety initiatives, <coughs> uh, several fire academy classes that we had. We got guys scheduled to go to school structures three in two weeks. Uh, Arkansas Department of Emergency Management, we had a medical awareness class. Some guys attended hazmat awareness. 
uh, I attended our, the Arkansas Fire Marshal Association Fall Conference, uh, got some competing in on uh, NFPA, and uh, we did several different NFPA uh, uh, codes and also some stuff on sprinkler systems, uh, very good and stuff, and good stuff that, uh, that's coming up and coming down on uh, residential sprinklers. Uh, I did find out that the executive fire officer training is uh, is only traveled and reimbursable, so everything's paid for except for my food, and so that's a good thing. But I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pay for the flight back and forth, but it is reimbursable, so uh, that's a good thing. Uh, fire prevention week's begun, and so we uh, we saw six hundred kids today already. Some hot fires. We're going to be doing that the rest of the week. Uh, Inspections and permits. Uh, first Baptist Learning Play, preschool extraordinary, Greenwood Police Station, Tractor Supply, all have different inspections there in uh, last month. Uh, we do not have any plan review. Uh, we want some more plan review. We want every plan review to come in if these things are growing. Uh, one firefighter resigned, we're down to 29, so we'll be uh, looking at adding personnel uh, at the end of the year, the first of the next year. Uh, still waiting to hear on our uh, grant we applied for on the mobile training unit. Uh, should be hearing something within the next couple of weeks on that, I've been told, uh, by our FEMA rep. And then uh, we're doing host testing and then all of our apparatus uh, and other annual services past uh, week. Uh, on Station 1 edition, uh, I wasn't able to meet with Michael as early as I needed to uh, because of Jessica's illness. But we met uh, last Friday in uh, Michael and Travis and Mayor. And we're currently looking at options to reduce costs and see if it's still even viable. Uh, so they're doing some stuff with the guy who's a little bitter and, and discussing things with him about maybe uh, we're just trying to see what options are out there and if there are any. Uh, so uh, still working on that a little bit. And uh, last, uh, lastly, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for your prayers for Jessica uh, during her little uh, spill with her back and illness. Uh, thanks, police department, for. Uh, officer getting there and for my first responders who got there so quickly and Smash County EMS and everybody. And, uh, it was one of those things where I'm not, I don't expect to see them in my house and I don't expect the pages to go off in my house, but uh, it, it was an interesting situation. But uh, Chief Dawson came up and, and so did Brooke came up to the hospital uh, while we were there and uh, he was there probably with me while we were waiting to get preliminary stuff for about an hour. And I, I really Thanks for all your prayers for Jessica. Who's that? Uh, yeah. I'd like to officially request Joseph's presence here next month. We missed, we missed that out on this month, but we need to get him here next month. Okay. Thank you. And we're glad Jessica's doing well. Council form. Here we go. We, we, we talked about the sidewalk down Denver last week, or last uh -huh. meeting. Did that come up again? We have gone out to that site, uh, Mr. McKinney, myself, Mr. Uh, huh? Joe Manus uh, went to, and they they walked it off, measured it. Uh, we talked to uh, Mr. Craig, uh, visited with him a little bit. And I don't know if you've got any numbers back. Okay. It's okay. I just had, I we, just want to follow up on it. Yes, yeah, we, we talked about it last month. And we actually went out. Didn't know if y'all looked at how much it was going to cost. Walked out to the mm -hmm. train and came off the line, and, and he's actually volunteered to go out and speak with all his neighbors. Yeah. It looks it looks like a difficult. Either way, it's going to be difficult either side. I don't know if we can take a turn and go down to the trail or something. This. <laughs> yeah. On the cost. Yeah. That's good. No, it's okay. As long as we're looking at it. Richard, me and Lance were looking at, you know, where Foy Brown used to access the back side of his mess. You know, it's cut off by the trail. That thing, uh, Lance told me I could drive back there and I did. There's nothing there. I mean, it's, it can't be worth much money. Farmers has it now. Um, I don't know what they'd take. They, I don't know. We, we may need to just approach them and ask them how much is that worth to you. Not just that one side, not the other mass. So, but just that one side that we could shortcut that Denver and 
then it wouldn't all go away when we got us. Mm -hmm. when we, when we, we, we looked at that actually we didn't walk down there but we I mean I'm well aware of where you're talking uh, and it goes right to the trail the only the only thing it, it doesn't help those houses that are would be in front of it unless you make it where they can get behind I, it, it's an interesting area and mr. Craig Larry has pointed out that those kids are coming from different directions I, I it, it surprised me that the amount that and I haven't seen them walk I'm, I'm not been over there I'm not saying they're not but there's a lot of people that use that, so yeah, I think that's certainly an option. And, and Shorty owns on top of the hill. Right he there. owns where there was once a a two-story house. Yes. yes, that's a little inside joke, but uh, yes, I think he still owns it. <laughs> he does. Okay. 40, 40, okay. Yeah, we, we can look at that. And I mean, I think that's definitely an option. Mayor, you put an email in our packet about three yeah. different scenarios on street costs. Why did you put that in there? Yeah. I don't know that I did. Yeah. It's what? Oh, I'm sorry. That is what I stuck in there. That's a, about a year late in coming to you. That was the, you had asked me, I think specifically about. We've seen that though before. I, so I couldn't remember if I ever yeah, gave it to you. That. Okay, that's what that was. I forgot. Thank that. you for reminding me what that was. I stuck that in there. Couldn't remember if I ever, I knew we had discussed it. I didn't know if I'd given it to you. I just wanted you to have it. Um, I got one little comment. I was wanting to ask okay. Chief Dawson if he knows <laughs> Any input into why the light at Coker flashes on occasion, just yellow I'm and red? It. You're for it. I'm not only for that, I'm just obviously for the removal of the light I since, agree. since day I one. That. But anyway, I was just wondering if you had any insight into why that's. Here's the reason why. Because. Now, every time it happens, we contact Joe, and then Joe has to contact the state. State. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, it was my suggestion that. Someone go get trained on how to fix the light when it goes out. It's ours. Which it's one is it? Yeah. It's ours. It is ours. Can we move it? Can we move it? Which one are, which one are y'all talking about? Right, right by the bridge. bridge. By the caboose. Yeah. I'd cool. like to go. I mean, I don't know if that's a I mean, deal I, for, for Grimes to get involved in or what, but I'd like to know what our... We've talked about that Fruit, before what are and specifically asked, you know, if it's our light, why can't we just turn it off or take it out or... But, because That's traffic moves serious. quicker. I mean, I y'all know I've, I I turn off the one at, I turn off the one at the square and just oh, <laughs> I turn them both off and just let it go. People, hey, I, I turn left out of this road right here every morning, and somebody stops and I wave and I go on through. That's and I I don't think there I don't know how many wrecks are out here, but at, on this little intersection, but every morning there's no worse place in town to turn left, and I don't have any trouble. I drive right back here, somebody waves, I turn left, and I go. Uh, you can turn this light off, both these lights off, people just go through town. It would, it'd I'd be fine. Worse than any of it. You know they know. Do what? Where you turn into Westwood, yeah. it's worse than any of it. No, yeah. I agree. I mean, that's we we right. can, they are our lights for sure. I don't know what the what the procedure of, as far as this. Yeah. They're, they're states until like six months later. Right. Yeah. And then but there's nothing governing us. I mean, they, I don't see why we couldn't experiment with that. I mean, what's the what's the, the we kind of have been unintentional. Seriously, I mean, what's what's the harm in turning those two lights off and just seeing? Uh, I think, think yeah, right. Well, but I mean, but if you you could have a if if we could figure out the time of day the bus is returning, you could have somebody come over here and just do the do the First Baptist thing up here for about five minutes and just. Mm -hmm. Wave the buses through and move I can on. See the, I can see the main street, but the one by the caboose is completely ridiculous. Yeah. A three way stop having a light is that just atrocious. Yeah. The, and the problem with it, we, we need to kind of make a decision. With it flashing all weekend, there are so many people that stop yes. right. and right. almost cause a wreck right. due to people the fact don't know what that means. They, they're yeah. like wow what do we do now so, <laughs> and, and the, <laughs> I mean do we need any what are the traffic would we need anything other than just turn, that stop sign there if we took the stop lot out no. they all turn right go turn right. around a new oh. hole I have let's another subject let's go turn it off and then you get out there or at least that one out you're talking about a stop sign coming off of Denver off of uh, Coker Oh, hold it. The four way stop off Coker? No. No, no where the, the light is. Where the light he, is. You, 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 you would still have to have a stop sign. You still have to have a stop You'd have to have a stop sign. Yeah. Coker. I started to say, we tried to take that stop sign now, and you're going to get to talk to Richard's That's brother another, about that. <laughs> well, and, the, and there's areas around town, too, that a stop, another stop sign could be. 
helpful too. Old Hackett Road, for instance. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was a mess. Right. By the way, nobody knows what yield means. Do you have something else? Well, everybody knows this, but I, I, what have I been back on this council two months, three months? One, the first one you weren't allowed to talk. <laughs> Every week since I've been on this council, someone has called me or said something to me about drainage. And it's, other than traffic, this probably the second largest problem in the city of, you know, this ditch has grown up, that ditch fell in, that one's whatever. And I mean, I think we all know that. Um, the frustrations that I'm hearing from people that have said something to me is they feel like there's no response from the city is our, you know, and, and I don't think it's that we're ignoring the, the fact that they, they exist, but maybe we need to do, you know, I don't know, we need to have a, a, a response of if it's, sorry, I'm not fixing it, you know, I guess if that's our response. But, you know, I, I just say that to say, as we go into this budget session this year, I, I would really like to see for it, I mean, that needs to be on our list of things to do. I think we've allocated uh, more money to drainage in the last two years than we'd ever yeah, allocated. And, we, and my response to them is always, we've allocated the money, it's the mayor's fault. Yeah. <laughs> well, and when I mean, you, if we it, can, it, you know, what's the calls? Let's some of it, I, I think this you figure out where the drainage is too, because when I've gone around with Joe, some of the stuff <laughs> you point to, he'll be like, that's, that's private property. Right. That's not, yeah. I mean, that, the problem is that these folks own this ditch and they've let it grow up and it's, it's we can't get in there, it's theirs. Yeah. They've messed it up. You, you know, know I'd, I'd almost there. like for us to have a, a, something that's, <clears throat> that explains to us what we can and can't do, where we can and can't go. When you when these people say, water's running over this street and it's never ran over that street and it's because it's all grown up over there, whatever. Yeah, well, that guy's private property and I can't take a dozer over there yeah. or whatever, you know? Last, last one that got me was Randy Mizell. Randy Mizell got and, me yesterday. Randy, you know, I asked Joe about available. it. And Joe said, well, he's he, he start working graveyard shift. And I think Randy's probably up. right. I mean, this, this yeah. ditch on the I other think, side of the street department is all think, grown up. Well, I think Randy's correct that there's more water coming on him than has ever come on him. And that's because the schools put in so many impermeable surfaces. And it's our fault that we hadn't made the school retain some of their water. So that being said, now where we get to where he's at, well, when he lost his tree that we went over and cut up during the ice storm, Unfortunately, most of his damage is over on private property. It's off of us. You know, most, that's what Joe says. But, uh, you know, we could go across his place and shape that back up. I don't I know why we can't. I we don't, don't either. You but, know, and part of the problem is. But if we it do won't go in, anywhere on this side of the street, that's. When we do put in drainage, if we, they've got to maintain it. It's on their ease, but they're responsible for maintaining it. But we do a bad job sometimes of putting in things that people can maintain. I think we need to do a better job of dressing things up, making it where they Make can it maintain. Make it mowable. And we, also, it mowable. and we also do a bad job of not getting things where we can get in there. The, all the drainage easements around town, and I say all, there's a lot of drainage easements around town that are that, and the, private property or not, there's still a drainage easement. Drainage easement doesn't mean anything if you can't get in there to do anything with it. Uh, and, and you're right, all the ordinances you read, everything says, and, and Joe was the first one to point it out, believe me. Uh, Joe and I have gone round and round, and, and we're starting to settle back into a, us sitting at the same table and talking about it, is that you've got these drainage easements that, yes, Mr. Smith was, was is obligated to maintain. I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's on his private property. He's supposed to maintain it. Well. Mr. Smith may be long gone, and, and it may be Miss Smith, who's 97 years old, who obviously 
she is still obligated, but she can't. She doesn't. She hasn't. So therefore, it's grown up. So I'm trying to talk Joe into, if you will, and I, can, I know I can tell him certain things, but he, he's got some legitimate issues. And, and, and we talked with Mike a little bit quite a while ago, and I think, I don't know if you ever got that back over to you from Joe. We were looking for a piece of paper. Here's what I wanted, a piece of paper to, to say your, your property has a drainage easement on it, and I need, we, the city, need in there to, fi to fix it. And we want you to sign this saying we may come in there. And it's not so much the backhoe or the trackhoe. They've got a pretty unique piece of equipment over there. In fact, Joe's looking at another piece of equipment that is just a drainage ditch clean-out machine. But you got to have something to put it in. So therefore, you got to have a dump truck back in there. So I'm wanting a piece of paper to say. Is it a permit for Yes, yes, sir. Well, a sign off here. Here's indemnify where, the city. Yes, that's what we're looking for. So, but there's but there's a couple of things. One, Mr. My, Mr. Mizell has a good point. A lot more water, and you touched on it. It's coming from the school. It's coming from uh, uh, Maple Ridge Heights. All everything above is coming down. I mean, that's that's how but it works. Not to interrupt you. No. But I, I, in his scenario. I think his is a case where where he's tried to maintain his property. He has, yes. But across the street, we're not even maintaining our own. Is not maintained, and it's backing up to him, yeah. and therefore his has fallen in, yeah. and now he can't maintain. And it. and that and so it's that creek house that, cars. that you're that everybody sees when you go down here on Bell Road and you looked at that creek. You're right, it, and, but what we don't see, and what I didn't know, is it does this number. As soon as it gets out of sight, it does this. So. We're looking at and talking, trying to get with the folks. One is the people that own that property. That, that creek goes over on that's not ours. It used to be used to be Randy's, used to be so Randy's. he's very familiar with it. They're on the other side, so we need to get in there and sh straighten that out. And that's of course core. I mean, you start doing things like that, we need to straighten that out. There's and make an eight-inch water main in it. Yes, and there's, there's water. The that's right. Our, yeah, water shortage. So. We are working on it, and I know it doesn't sound good, and, I, and you asked for a good thing to tell people. There's a gentleman that frequents my office frequently, and he, he is in the middle of a situation, but he wants me to come and fix his right in his backyard. Well, it really won't do me any good to fix his. I need to go upstream or downstream, whatever it is, up and fix it. So. Still a lot of talking going on, and, and it's frustrating. I know it is. It's not very much to the citizens. It looks like there's absolutely nothing happening. But we're working on it. And, and I know Daniel had called me one time, and, and I, he volunteered, so I'm going to take him up on it to maybe come in and do a study a little bit and get some things guided. And, you know, and a study means all that means to somebody that has water running across their driveway is it's going to take, think about it's going to take forever. This past year, I mean, and I know we got we got lots of drainage issues, but when you're having 18 inch rains, I don't care you're what you're going to have got. it. I don't yeah. care what you got. Well, and you can have here, the widest, deepest ditch in America. Yeah, here, here's an answer I would like to give people. I've been giving this to people, not to be sarcastic, but to say, with those rains, and the mark that that former street department head Don Keys has got out there on this bridge, that's no longer. It used to be if it got up to that mark, because I know where it is. We'd go over and look at it. You could guarantee that. Westwood and Indian Hills and those areas, Westwood, no. we're, we're already Green underwater. Green, Green, Green Greenwood West. West, thank you. And it was just a done deal. They're underwater. You might as well go over there and get a boat. And it's not that way anymore because but, of the, the major clean out. And, and here's another part of that. I mean, I, I completely agree. When you get 20 inches of rain, there's not much we can do about it. Right now, this isn't an easy thing to do, but right now the ground is dry and we can work on it. Real dry. And if there's anything we can do right now while the ground is dry, we need to be doing it. And because the next thing you know, it's going to be wet and we can't work on it because it's right. wet. Real quick. So yeah. we've kind of got a short window right now of anything that we can do. I, and I think that's, do it. yeah, I agree. And, and we're, I like we're, the people that have called me, Daniel, the money's available. It's the administration. It's mayor's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know the answer. Yeah. And to so quote, can, and to quote our city attorney, the that's why I can pay the big And I, I intend to make it available next year. We're, we're going to work hard on it and try to get that. That, that is one of my deals that we're going to try to work on. Uh, and remember that when we get budget study sessions. And speaking of budget study sessions, does anybody else have anything? Council, I don't want to take you more time than I have to. But did we get dates or was it agreed that we wouldn't get a date until you came back with the zero budget? To the, okay. Okay. Maybe we uh, adjourn. Well, one thing, real quick. I, I failed to mention two things. One is Clarence Green and, and 
who has been with the city now 10 years as of today, maybe his anniversary or yesterday, sometime this week, good employee, does a great job for the sewer department. He's don't have anything to give him. He's not here anyway, but we're, I like to recognize those folks. I don't think Clarence would show up anyway unless there's pizza, but uh, that's not a bad thing. Was pizza. He's been there 10 years, so I want to recognize him. The other thing is we got a letter a while back. This is dated September the 1st, so from the Arkansas Blood Institute. Dear Mr. Kinslow, all of us at Arkansas Blood Institute want to thank you for making an outstanding summer by hosting your recent blood drive. 118 people showed up to give and 105 were able to donate on Wednesday, August 19, 2015, Thursday, and Thursday, August the 20th. It goes on and on and on. It thanks. Please share our gratitude with Stuart Bryan, Will Dawson, and Dan Gladwin for being the champions of this event at Greenwood Guns and Hoses. The, uh, the gift of energy and time to make this blood drive a success is very, very greatly appreciated. Uh, let me read one thing to you, though, out of it, and I forgot I skipped it. Uh, for others battling cancer or ongoing medical con conditions, each day is a valued gift. In fact, we recently heard from a young man who thanked us for providing blood to sustain his mother a few more days, allowing him to travel to her hospital bedside to express his love, his love one last time. So, and then he wrote on it, this is all typed, and it's a nice letter from Gary Walmack, blood program consultant, but he also wrote congratulations on a record setting blood drive. So thanks to uh, guns and hoses for doing what they do and and, uh, and I almost passed out this time so I did my part. Uh, any other thing I would entertain a motion to yes sir. Yeah. yeah. I hear Batman Batman's gonna be there. Batman. Uh, sorry. <laughs> It'll be cool. Everybody come. Fire department. Entertain. Huh? No, that we were talking about. That. They're not. They want to wait until after they get their budgets back. Okay. They're not. I make a motion. We adjourn. Motion second. and second to adjourn. You are done. So. Business. Get with me. 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 Get